Shout out to your thermal and mana. Shout out SC to your thermal and mana. Shout out to your thermal and mana. SC2 challenges and the results. Ghosts and Medivex, rank 100 Grandmaster. Two random Protos units, rank 159 Grandmaster. Tier 1 units only. Several Rogue and Dark at a million. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck? What the fuck is going on here? How is this on the front of the StarCraft subreddit at the tip of, of the, the top of the list? Like, if you're gonna bring up any players that like to play tier 1 units, I don't think you'd go Sarah Rogue Dark, but it's a bit of a post for sure. These are probably the strongest late game Zerk players ever. Actually, not probably. For sure. Interesting. Korean dude voiceover StarCraft sounds? Whoa, for sure. These are probably the strongest late game Zerk players ever. Actually, not probably. For sure. Interesting. Korean dude voiceover StarCraft sounds? Whoa, this is from 4th of October 2008. Whoa, this is. Whoa, this is. From 4th of October 2008. From 4th of October 2008. Starcraft에 나오는 유니트들 상담서 한번 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 아 먼저 테란 유니, 테란의 레이스 종이 비행기 레이스입니다. Rate awaiting launch orders. Red the Redding Launch Order, Sector Rapti, going to see, I'll take formation. Yeah, 그리고 다음으로 SCV. Yes sir, yes sir, very good to go sir. Down with you, just finish. Yeah, 그리고 다음에는 이제 그 yes. 사이언스 베이스 한번 해보겠습니다. We have your missile, affirmative sir. Yeah. <laughs> This is what English sounds like, by the way, to non-native English speakers, in case you're wondering. 그리고 어, 프로토스 유니트들 한번 보여드릴게요. 질럿 한번 해보겠습니다. My life alive, she else on a guy me called Bloody. My favorite part about this is that he's doing this for an audience for an audience of just people. Right? This is not an audience of gamers. This is 2008. This is just a bunch of people that came to see, I think, a comedy show or something. Like, if you do it, <laughs> an audience of normies, that's not what I was going to call them, but fair enough. Let's out it in the I, I love, I love that all these people are laughing and they are actually familiar with what he's talking about. Look at this lady. She's well familiar with StarCraft jokes. In 2008. <laughs> Very good. Occupation. I thought it was a typo and it was supposed to say gangster or something. I'm also not entirely sure about this portrait if I'm being 100% honest. But I think, yeah, it's, okay, I see, I see. I see. Yeah, here, look, there's the cinnamon edition tape. This is not acceptable cat. <laughs> I don't think that, but, but. So this is a done a little bit. It's a cute video, I guess. I cute video, I guess. 
I've actually done a little bit of research, guys. So this is a new thing that Twitch has recently started a little bit ago. Where they're offering ad incentives for the last half year or so. So basically what you have to do is set a certain number of ads that need to play on the stream every hour. And then you get paid by default, assuming you stream enough hours that month. In theory, pretty cool, but they've actually done a bit of a cheeky thing, man. So here's here's how it works, right? Here's here's what I've noticed. Oh, actually, let me let me get a paint, right? So here's here's kind of how it goes, right? So they've got like a box over here. They've got a box over here. This one says they've got a box over here, and this one says like a hundred dollars. This one says one hundred and fifty dollars. This one says two hundred dollars, right? And this one says two minutes of ads. This one. says three minutes of ads this one says four i've actually done a little bit of research guys so this is a new thing that twitch has recently started a little bit ago where they're offering ad incentives for the last half year or so so basically what you have to do is set a certain number of ads that need to play on the stream every hour and then you get paid by default assuming you stream enough hours that month in theory, pretty cool, but they've actually done a bit of a cheeky thing, man. So here's here's how it works, right? Here's here's what I've noticed. Oh, actually, let me let me get a paint, right? So here's here's kind of how it goes, right? So they've got like a box over here. They've got a box over here. They've got a box over here, and this one says like a hundred dollars. This one says one hundred and fifty dollars. This one says two hundred dollars, right? And this one says two minutes of ads. This one says three minutes of ads. This one says four minutes of ads. And then for like X hours of streaming every month, right? So say this is the offer you get in the first month. This, this is where you're going to get. So say you're like, okay, I'm going to pick the middle option. Guess what happens next month? <laughs> they will give you a similar offer. 150, 200, 250. However, they take out the leftmost option. So now suddenly, your options are three, four, and five minutes. <laughs> and this keeps going. Streaming every month, right? So, so they've got goes right? Over here. They've got a box over here. They've got a box over here. And this one says like $100. This one says $150. This one says $200, right? And this one says two minutes of ads. This one says three minutes of ads. This one says four minutes of ads. And then for like X hours of streaming every month, right? So say this is the offer you get in the first month. This, this is where you're going to get. So say you're like, okay, I'm going to pick the middle option. Guess what happens next month? <laughs> they will give you a similar offer. 150, 200, 250. However, they take out the leftmost option. So now suddenly, your op most option. So now option. So now suddenly, your options are three, four, and five minutes. <laughs> and this keeps going. Wardy, Wardy tweeted about this. Let me actually find it out real quick. Apparently, this is one of the offers that Wardy got today. Ten minutes of ads an hour. 10 minutes of ads an hour on a live streaming platform. Are you kidding? That's ridiculous. Anyways. Yeah, so this is apparently what Queenie got. 8 minutes of ads an hour. 103 hours for a month for 400 bucks. So, this is Winter's option. <laughs> 3 minutes of ads an hour. 190 hours of streaming. For $269. We can do the math on that one. That is 269 divided by 190 hours. That is $1.41 for every hour that Winter streams that Twitch pays him. <clears throat> so if Winter were to pick the middle option, the one minute option is gone next month. He's never going to see that one ever again. My ad incentive this month was actually pretty good. Because I've been doing this little test. So I've noticed, and this was just a little bit of uh, trial and error, I guess. But I noticed in the months that I did a lot of reruns, my ad incentive was absolutely trash. And I noticed that like whenever we talked about this with streamers internally, anyone who does a lot of reruns gets terrible ad incentives. And 
Winter basically does a rerun every day. Like, Winter does reruns essentially 24-7, and this is his ad incentive. So, in a way, they're kind of like... I don't know if this is intentional, but they're kind of like pushing away reruns. So I stopped doing reruns over the last four weeks, and my ad incentive that I got offered on Twitch went up like threefold. Now, obviously, it is for the next month, and November in general is a pretty good month. But yeah, it is, it is kind of interesting. So obviously, ads only ever play for non-subs. And honestly, I feel like the vast majority of viewers over here are, you know, sub to the channel, but... Like, that's kind of the question you gotta ask yourself as a streamer, right? Like, how many- like, how many minutes of ads per hour is cool? So, like, one minute of ads an hour? Sure. Two minutes of ads an hour? Sure. Three minutes of- like, you gotta decide where you draw the line. Yeah, so my offer this month, the, for the next month that is, I also have three offers, and, and one of them is four minutes, the next one is six minutes, and then the last one the next one is minutes. the next one is six minutes, and then the last one is seven minutes. I don't want to do like that's a lot. That's a lot of ads. How many ads do you think they're gonna push for though? Like if Twitch is offering Wardy ten minutes of ads an hour, so mine comes down for six minutes of ads an hour to eleven bucks an hour. So if I play six minutes of ads an hour, I get roughly eleven bucks. If I play four minutes of ads an hour. I get seven and a half dollars an hour. So that's quite significant. Like that is an hour. So that's quite significant. Like that is obviously on top of all the other things. So that's pretty good. But is it worth, yeah, exactly. Is it worth the viewer to, I don't know, man. I, it, it's all, I'd rather just not play any ads. But you know, someone actually suggested this on Twitter and I unironically think it's a good idea. Someone suggested on Twitter that when you ban someone idea. Someone suggested on Twitter that when you ban someone from the stream, rather than them not showing the stream anymore, just have them watch ads the entire time. I think that's pretty clever. Like someone's like, you know, you ban them from the stream and then just like they sit there watching ads for 15 minutes ready to get angry in the chat again and like, oh my god! It's like just like they sit there watching ads for 15 minutes ready to get angry in the chat again and like, oh my god! Ad is still playing. And then just keep playing ads over and over. That's good, right? That's pretty clever. Don't know if Twitch is ever going to get to that point, but that would be funny as hell. Like if you get banned from a channel, you just see ads nonstop. <laughs> a redemption arc. If you say something really dumb in the chat, you get to watch 10 minutes of ads and then you come back to the channel. That would actually be a channel. The channel. That would actually be cool, dude. Like, then it would actually be like a... We can gamify the ad situation, for sure. I'm like, Selderick, look, you've talked about pagan death metal a little bit too much. Go sit on the bench, watch ads for 10 minutes. Eh? Right? Bench, watch ads for 10 minutes. Eh? Right? Meerkats, you're being too horny. Go watch ads for 20 minutes. See, these are things that would be... Yeah, great idea. Sit on the ad bench. <laughs> Freedom of speech now only includes ads. <laughs> <laughs> Loco, Twitch told me I watched your stream two days in the last month. Oh, you got an email? I saw Gabe got an email. Gabe is a real passionate man. Despite the fact that he's always posting those. A a anyways, look at this. Streams played 22 out of 22. Yeah, this is the only statistic we're willing to see, okay? Wait, memory, you got 23 out of 22? That's real passion. Below five days equals no passion. You got 19 out of 22. Get out, Ace. Can't believe this guy, man. Only 19 out of 22 streams. May as well just take your VIP badge away. Oh, okay. Now, Meerkat, Meerkat's, okay. Meerkat's, yeah, he gets it. Six days and nine hours? Wait, Nolan has got six days and nine hours? What is this piece of we get to? Five days and 18 hours only? Memory has got six and 11? Ay, 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 ay. Yo, if either of you want to have uh, Mugetsu's sword, we'll be handing it out to the most viewed hours. 
You have six days and 20 hours? For real, Falcon? I can't see this. Like, I, I have no way of, of reviewing it. You've got six days and 20 hours? How do you check yours? I don't know. I think you got an email or something. Oh my god. 20 hours? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Six days and 20 hours worth. 22 out of 22 streams. I mean, for every message though that you sent, Gabe sent five of them. AKA Gabe is a real spam lord. I don't know if reruns count, but I haven't done a rerun. Anyways, Loco, check this one out. Oh no, what have I done? Anyways, Loco, check. Anyways, Loco, check. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> Anyways. Loco, check this one out. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I clicked, I clicked. Okay, alright, alright, fine, you got me. Ooh, we're almost at 10 minutes. Ooh, we're almost at 10 million messages, guys. That's pretty cool. What is that compared to, like, the real uh, big streamers on, on this platform, though? Who's, like, the biggest streamer right now on Twitch? This platform, though. Who's, like, the biggest streamer right now on Twitch? I want to see how many messages they've got in total. Okay, biggest channel is XQC. Ay, ay, ay. They're at 673 million. That, that's that's a little that's a little much my god. Oh, that's a bot. These are all bots. I Could have sworn to set Mugetsu, but not quite that that's quite a few messages. Yeah, that's quite a few Chat spam wise probably yeah, that's quite a few Chat spam wise probably Pokimane only 69 million. It's not even close. That is quite nice, though. No, there's a lot of very large streamers on Twitch these days, man. Plus, like, XQC streams a ridiculous amount of hours. Like, he's live basically 24-7, it seems. Okay, maybe, maybe like, half half of the day. But. I posted mine to Twitter. Twitter.com slash local TV. Is that what you meant? 359 messages sent. Sent. Are you taking uh, notes to Gabe? Get G Gabe, are you G Gabe? Are you paying attention? Look, this 300. That's also possible. You seeing that? I get I get emails all the time. You seeing that? I get I get emails all the time that are a little bit shaky, but this one was next level. Hi. You seeing that? I get I get emails all the time that are a little bit shaky, but this one was next level. 
Hi! Doesn't address me or anything like that. Hi! We're launching our new P2E game. So this is basically a NFT crypto type of game. Very soon, and we were wondering if you're interested in doing a promo video for us. We can pay a fee and offer some free NFTs in exchange. Looking forward to hearing from you. This is the full email. It says the, the, the person's name right below this. Notice how it doesn't mention the game. <laughs> it doesn't even mention the game. It says nothing. The game is not important. No, 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 no. I thought NFTs were already pretty much dead, but uh, I guess not, huh? Not, huh? Hello. One zealot, pretending to be the most badass zealot in the world. Destroy all the things. Okay, I lost one. Badass zealot in the world. Destroy all the world. Destroy all the things. Okay, I lost one. Okay. Where'd the mama ship go? Oh, mama ship's not very good at protecting anything, huh? Is this life? Is this a rerun? Yes. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes to both. It's a life rerun. Who wants to get sucked by the vortex? What? X. Rerun. Who wants to get sucked by the vortex? Everybody get close together. What? Okay, fine. Oh. What just? Ah. Okay, everyone get in here. Oh, come on. Thank you, Fluffy Waffle. Fluffy Waffle immediately resubs, huh? A little bit suspicious, but... Again? You've had a, haven't had a good Vortex in a long time? Alright. I should have just right-clicked it. All these fancy abilities are not worth it. <laughs> uh, are we winning? I think we're winning. Battle Cruiser unit pretty good. Thank you, Archival. Gift. Thank you, Archival. Good name. All right, we're clear. Of course, to rendezvous with Valerian. We're gonna rendezvous. We gotta be like, hey, bonjour, uh, je veux une. Uh. We gotta be like. We gotta be like. We gotta be like, hey, we gotta be like, hey, 
We're gonna be like, hey, bonjour, uh, je veux une uh, croissant. Et une uh, café. That sort of thing. I think that's what you do during a rendezvous. You just use as many sophisticated French words as you can find. Oui, et toi? J'ai un très gros beat. Is this, this is what it feels like to play against Battle Cruiser Rushes? No, Battle Cruiser Rushes are sick, man. I like, I like, uh, yeah. How to find, uh, yeah. How to find out if your opponent is salty? Very nice. Just make some anti-air flyers, guys. It's the best way to do it. I Take a response. These bits cleaning out the crumbs in my keyboard. You can have them, I guess. That's beautiful, man. Appreciate it. Can you beat StarCraft II Wings of Liberty? Appreciate it. Can you beat StarCraft II Wings of Liberty with only SCVs? Laughing, crying emoji? I haven't gotten to the point yet where I'm putting emojis in my video titles and thumbnails. Laughing, crying emoji, PNG. Let me, let me give it a try, Chet. Let me, uh, let me give it a try. Because that is what the real YouTubers do these days, okay? No, no arrows, no red circles, none of that. Okay, so here's, here's today's YouTube video thumbnail. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> you know the worst part is, it would actually work. I can almost guarantee you that it would work. It's so painful. This is too cringe. I can't. I can't. I can't. But I'm sure it would work. We're not at quite the, the end game yet, guys. The desperate times are not quite here yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do it for the money, loco. No, no, no. You got to make them bigger and rotate them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. See, I see you guys do a lot of YouTube viewing. I do a little bit of a drop shadow behind it. Don't forget to rotate one of them slightly for maximum effect. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And then you make the actual original image way brighter. Just colors only. This one, maximum saturation on all the things. There it is, man. It looks like a viral YouTube video or a Facebook video now. That thumbnail would revive StarCraft 2. Yeah, yeah. Happiness is a... Yeah. Happiness is a U U R <laughs> underscore. <laughs> How long does it last? Weight gain. How long does it last? Weight gain. Loss of financial security and income. Oh my god. Okay. Taking care of your mental health. Okay. All right. I'll keep all of this in mind, man. <laughs> Did it say receding hairline? Oh my god! Hairline? Oh my god! Ooh! Ooh! That explains why they didn't fit in the frame. So they don't even have an anti-ground mode. They hit air and ground? Wait, what? They hit air and ground? They hit air and ground that I need a tech lab to produce them. Okay. So what's the plan now, Commander? I'm just gonna make only those units. That's the plan. We're only gonna make one unit now. Do they have repair drones following them around? Is that what I see? And they're healing up the Odin? You know those rates? You know those rates one promise you? Actually, they're not rates. Truth is, we received some, but we stripped them up to add their abilities to dropship. So yeah, you will want to make uh, do with these experimental missile frigates we got from Mobius. They don't have the anti-arm abilities of the wraith, but they can take a punch if you send them ahead of the Odin. 
They also include repair drones for support. Okay. How much are they? 350 minerals? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, guys, I think it's a little early for a midlife crisis. But one day I'll probably be sitting around and I'll be like, Oh my god, the only thing I've done for the first 40 years of my life is play video games. Ah, pretty good actually. Ah, it's not so bad. Yeah, actually, you know what? That could be worse. I kind of like making these missile frigates, guys. I want to make a whole lot of them. Yo, these things are awesome. Especially since I'm here. I kind of like making these missile frigates, guys. I want to make a whole lot of them. Yo, these things are awesome. Especially since I'm healing. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep using it. I might get the heroes or something, but let's get Jimmy. Thought we were just going over the symptoms of a midlife crisis. A dangerous uh, subject. Apparently it can start when you're 30 years old. Stormgate will make me feel young again. <laughs> Copium. You're 20 and you already have it. Well, there you go. I remember when I was 20 in the strength of my life before the back pain. Dude, these things are the back pain. Back pain. Dude, these things are amazing, man. This is what uh, Protoss players uh, feel like when they're playing against frigates. Or, as they're called, liver. The first time you went to a club was at 8 years old? They start early in Romania. As they're called, liberators. The first time you went to a club was at 8 years old? They start early in Romania, don't you? Ooh, oh, these abilities are amazing. Ooh, oh, these abilities are amazing. Odin shutdown is imminent? No, 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 it's fine. We were having a discussion about that yesterday in the Patreon group chat. Apparently in Romania, what was the drink called again? Oh, I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Someone found out about this Romanian alcohol. Someone found out about this Romanian alcohol that apparently historically was drink uh, was drunk right before every meal, including breakfast. It was like between 27 and 40, or no, 27 and 82 percent alcohol. It's quite the range. Tuvica? I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah look. It's a traditional Ger or Romanian spirit. Look, look. It's a tradition that contains between 24 and 86% alcohol by volume. I love it. It's like, ah, whatever. As long as it burns going down. <laughs> it's like, ah, whatever. As long as it burns going down, that's all we really care about. It's such a range. Apparently it's made from plums and Romania is the largest plum producer in the European Union. Among the top plum producers in the world. Anyways, apparently it's not commonly drunk anymore. I know. It makes sense. They drink it in the morning and after that they go and work the land for 10 to 14 hours. Damn.
Damn, dude. Yeah, life was a little different back in the day, I guess, huh? Poor Jimmy over here, man. Yeah, I guess, huh? Huh? Poor Jimmy over here, man. I don't know if they deal that much damage, but the animation is sick. It is really like a Valkyrie 2.0. No, their damage is sick, too. Plus, they have to repair drones? Like, <laughs> the fact that they repair one another. Oh, plus I can obviously use Mr. Swan here as well to repair the Odin if it's really desperate. I sound like Mickey? Really desperate. I sound like Mickey? Wait, what? Ooh, oh, these abilities are amazing. I sound like Mickey? Wait, what? Ooh, oh, these abilities are amazing. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no, I could, I could, yeah. I'm just excited about the frigate, okay? Tigus is going. Wait, am I still gonna get another upgrade? Hold up, do I still get another upgrade? Improves the healing rate? I can't wait to dig into that. Sure. Sure, I like that. I, I, I agree. What we need is more healing rate. I thought they were a little weak. Definitely need a little bit more healing rate. 100%. Oh my god. I am now a missile frigate main. Okay, he's going to take a little bit of a break over here. Jimmy is also taking a break. And a break. And fire. This is gonna get tricky. I'm detecting battle cruisers <laughs> at the next base. Oh, it has splashed down. I didn't realize that part. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Oh, wait. You were supposed to take a break. You didn't take a break. Don't worry, old buddy. I'll give you some time to catch up. Oh no. That's why we have a Viking to take to take those hits. Okay, they may have overdone it with some of the units, man. <laughs> I think you're probably supposed to use this as a support unit. Kind of like you know, High Templar infesters. Infesters. Actually, those are very much the armies all on their own. Wait. Wait. Are you kidding me right now? That was a Wraith backstab? It's not cool, game. Don't appreciate that much. There were suddenly 50 Wraiths. Very toxic behavior. Not, <laughs> not such a unit now, is it? You're right, this convinced me. Wraiths, best unit in the game. He's a little low on HP. He's a little low on HP, though. Yeah. Okay, here we go, here we go. I killed the best unit in the game. Like it wasn't even the best unit in the game. Amazing. Nukes! Quick, fly in him! Amazing. Nukes! Quick, fly in him! Fly in there! Yes! Happy New Year! Okay. No! Woo!
Oh! That was so close. Oh, I can't believe we did that on the first try. Almost too greedy. Bro, I couldn't stop flying. Like, I couldn't fly, right? Like, that was a problem. Oh, okay. First try. Let's go. Didn't even die once. There's no purifying, by the way, guys. Normally, you can purify. I- this is kind of like Dark Souls. I- this is kind of like Dark Souls now. I, I've kind of lost the plot of the story. Mario can't be purified, huh? It was all too late. I can purify whatever this is. Maybe it's not dead yet. Yeah, maybe. Muriel, my assistant. My lover. Lost to the blight. You never once laid a hand on me. You have proven firsthand that though the blight may trap us in an undying shell of impurity, it will never deprive us of who we are. Wait, is this Muriel's? And anyways, I've tried countless experiments to bring her back to me, but it's all been to no avail. Oh no! Thanks to my constant work with the blight, the immortal kings came to being. And now even the white priestess suffers as a result of my work. Now that I've divided the king, surely I will be driven from my lab. Heh! Ha ha! Ha! Ha ha! Ha! Good voice acting. Good voice acting. Truly, I am. Good voice acting. Good voice acting. Truly, I am a pitiable fool without you, Muriel. And yet, I mustn't give up now. Not until your life's work is complete. Not until we save the White Priestess. Please, Muriel, one day. Let me hear your voice again. Manipulates Blighted to blast enemies. While slow, this deals heavy damage and can blow enemies away at a distance. Vaden, the head of the King's Mage Brigade, became unusually obsessed with the Blighted experiments after losing his beloved. He sank into depravity. Alright. Ooh, and I can now unlock sealed doors. Alright. Amazing. Muriel's Blighted Letter. Please don't blame yourself. I prepared for this eventuality when I set out to study the Blight. I wanted to tell you face to face, but I couldn't find the words. Please forgive me. There's so much more to do. I hope you'll continue researching in my stead. I'm sorry things ended up this way. This game's kind of sad, guys. Like, the story, believe it or not, this may come as a surprise, but it's kind of sad. My repeated experiments have produced unexpected results. I have yet to return a Blighted to its former consciousness. However, I've successfully created a new Blighted from a test subject that retains conscious, uh, or conscious thought rather, and the ability to communicate. I have to continue monitoring their, pro uh, monitoring their progress, but by creating a Blighted that retains its humanity, have I unlocked the secret to immortality? At least the king will be pleased. I suppose I could call the substance wrong from the White Priestess. The deathless elixir. Though there's nothing I can do for Muriel. Any trace of humanity left in her has long since dissipated. So basically the story of this game is that someone tried coming up with a cure to this disease and accidentally things up. Okay. So basically the story of this game is that someone tried coming up with a cure to this disease and accidentally things up. Okay. Open sesame. Silva's blight-stained note. The forbidden domain is filled with unfathomable experiments. The air is so choked with blight, I can't even breathe without a mask. Silva's bl blight, I can't even breathe without a mask. I'm the only one who can protect the white priestess of the fount. I'm all she has left. If I drink the elixir, will it give me the strength needed to protect her? 
I'm useless as I am now, as I've been. I want to transform myself. I must, for secret's sake. Oh, yikes. There's one boss down here somewhere, guys. I think, anyways. Oh, jeez. What a lovely place. This seems friendly. Friendly and inviting. Yeah, this is what I imagine the inside of my stomach looks like. Oh my god, they deal much damage. Holy crap. Oh my god, they deal much Oh my god, they Oh my god, they deal much damage. Holy crap. My stomach looks worse. Not mine, Chad. I only eat leaves and uh, plants. Never anything unhealthy. Not even once. Try listening to the music. Oh god. A horrible place. All right. Peace. All right. All right. I want to see what's behind the door. This is where we begin. Right over here. Now, right over here at the very beginning is a door that I could not previously open. Oh my god, my character is completely blighted out of her mind, by the way. She's even growing tentacles now. Oh my god, my character is completely blighted Oh my god, my character is completely blighted out of her mind, by the way. She's even growing tentacles now. Tentacles now. Oh. Restoring the Aegis Curio. The Aegis Curio, crafted long ago by the ancients, holds the power to ease the su or ease the suffering of the priestesses who absorbed blight while performing purifications. Its power has been weakened by repeated purifications by priestesses over many years. The power of an ancient spell can be used to restore this power and help the white priestess if you can decipher the stone tablet. I am prepared to restore the curio. I wish I would decipher the spell myself, but alas, I have little time left. So this is where we make it. I only have one part though. Like I have one of the seven stone tablets. Oh, I can maybe go over this stone tablets. Oh, I can maybe go over this now, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we fall down. So there's probably something to loot, because this is that really large room that I tried climbing in a couple times. <laughs> uh, where do you think the thing is? Uh, where do you think... Where do you... Uh, where... Uh, where... Where do you think the thing is at? It's over there! I saw it! I saw the f thing! That's it right there, man. For 100%. 100% right there. I, I was close. Okay, we're gonna try and get it from here. No! That's it right there, man. So this is the real jump. So this is the real jump right over here. But I don't have the other ability. Like I, I don't have the the extra dash. So I don't see how I can get over there. Like it's right over here, right above me. But I, I, I don't see how I can get there. You don't need the extra dash? 
How would I not need the extra dash? You can only do a single jump. I can do a dash and one jump. There's no double jumping. So I'd have to jump first and then dash? Dash first, then jump? Yeah, but like, that's, that, that's how far you can go. Okay, that was not very smart by me. Oh, is that the idea? You like attack the air and you get time to turn around? So that's a pretty big slowdown. I guess I can use that as well while falling down, right? Oh yeah, it also moves you up ever so slightly. That's an interesting, interesting decision. Oh my god, bro. Okay. Time to get over it. Because I was so good at that game, I decided I wanted to play it again. Well, I used Silva there, but Lily didn't grab onto the thing. Okay. Nope. Panic. So. I don't see how I can get high enough. Like, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm not going up. Oh God, nope, <laughs> panic, panic. Okay, I think I'm gonna dash, jump, melee attack, dash again. Oh my God. Oh my god. That's gotta be so f***ing close. F me. There's not even any motivational quotes in this game, dude. There's no hammer, no cauldron. Nope, nope. <laughs> Ow! No! <laughs> ah! F*** me, man. I know as well when like the stream delay catches up because I just see tons of movement from the corner of my eye. Your failure here is a metaphor. To learn for what, please resume climbing. Rob Dubbin. Thank you, uh, whatever the character's name was in uh, getting over it. I think it was a bunny. Bennett Foddy, that's it. F*** me, f*** me, f*** me me <laughs> oh I don't like this game this game is ass there's nothing even like it's gonna give me like 5 HP boost or whatever man but now I need to get the goddamn thing too I'm gonna go the other way once again I'm gonna make the walk of shame all the way over there and then inevitably fall down again a little bit too far we all know it's gonna happen but maybe on the off chance I will do something different oh what would be the order of getting there? Don't get stuck with the thing that ruins your day. Smile and be happy. Life is too short to be wasted on negative thinking. Ritugaturi. Well said. Jump before cry. It doesn't bring me any higher though. Jump dash hammer hammer. Wait, you don't think I need to dash? Think like for a second time? Okay, well. <gasps> First try, baby. First try. Uh, I found a small girl in the Deadlands. She didn't speak, but fixed her gaze upon me as she clung desperately to me. I don't quite know what came over me then. Had I gone mad, wanting to bring back a child of the ancients? Was it because she resembled us? Because he was a, a child, or perhaps a sense of obligation? Perhaps I wanted my sins to be forgiven.
Okay, got some stagnant blight. And another piece of paper. Though we once thought them completely wiped out, the ancients have returned. From the farthest reaches of the land they came. Or they come, rather, reanimated by the blight. The children of the ancients were revered and worshipped in Land's End as the white priestesses. They were the only ones who could stave off the blight. And though I knew well, or I know well, or full well, the toll that purification places on their bodies, I could find no way to forestall their ultimate sacrifice. Another sin to add to the pile. Atonement now seems but a bitter joke. Guys, I got over it. Look at me now, Ma. I got a piece of paper that I didn't have before. I think it's the motivational quotes from Bunny Warren and Makavas that uh, really got me through this all. It's over here. It's over here, isn't it? It's over here, isn't it? It's over here, isn't it? It's over here, isn't I've already been here. No, I haven't. Yo! Accidentally good! The room turned orange! Every time I see the color orange now... Dopamine. Right away. Dopamine hit as soon as I see orange. Remember when we used to struggle in this room? Me meter. We're just cruising through everything now. Like, sex is nice and all, but have you ever had a, a, a room turn orange? That's what I'm saying. Luck, oh, I have not. Thanks for rubbing it in. Well, you should pick up the game. So you can make the room turn orange. I mean... I don't know, man. I just say words. So hopefully people will think I sound cool. I obviously have no idea what that's like. So I can... I can open... Like, okay. <laughs> words. Like, all of those words made sense, but not in that order. Like, all of those words made sense, but not in that order. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
عبدي داهم جاه جاه عبدي داهم جاه جاه Like all of those words made sense, but not in that order. Loco, 2022. Dear Diary, Today I died. I was killed by this thing in some expansion. I leave all that I own to my cat. Goodbye, cruel world. Alright. How, how do you... What are the... How does this... Is there a name for this... Is there a name for this particular ship? If not, the class should suffice. Thank you. Guys, I am disappointed with the people that are asking questions sometimes on StarCraft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've played any StarCraft 2 at any point, you'll probably know the name, right? It's the Hyperion. Oh, thank God. Cattle Bruiser? No. Muras are so big, it's crazy. No, they're not this big. They're, this is not in scale. They're supposed to be like a thousand people on the... Uh... Uh, okay, okay, fine. Fine. No. God, please remove the tree. Fine. No. God, please remove the trash players from StarCraft. <laughs> okay, alright, fine. Okay, fine. I've gone to the dark side. Fine. I've gone to the dark side. <laughs> what is going on? Look at this game. Look at look at this game. Look at look at the mini map. What what is going on? This guy is at It's okay. It's okay. Dude, honestly, some like the people that have the most fun in StarCraft 2 are usually also ranked on the lower end of the ladder. I'm fairly sure that, like, the higher you climb, the less fun the game. Honestly, some, like, these guys that... It's okay. I'm fairly sure that, like, the higher you climb, the less fun the game actually becomes. Like, the game itself may still be enjoyable, but the fun part is no longer really there. <laughs> There's one ghost. <laughs> Why is there one ghost? There's... <laughs> All right, nice. Look. There's... <laughs> All right, nice. All right, nice. Look, I'm surfer and I have a blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing the game for fun is where where they get you, man. Oh, we do splash damage. Get you, man. Oh, we do splash damage. Holy! Sh Normally, it doesn't do splash damage. Thank you, four marines. Which one's Jimmy? Oh, <laughs> that explains why it didn't show up at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I was wondering where Jimmy went. Jimmy, no! Jimmy, stop that! Jimmy, stop messing around, Jim! Oh my god. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is get Marauders. <laughs> I think Marauders are probably good. What's up? You can count on. What's the plan? I'm glad that I can count on you, Jimmy. That means a lot. Oh my god. Those are probably good. What's up? You can count on me. Talk to me. I'm glad that I can count on you, Jimmy. That means a lot. Oh my god. Not the healer, please. Nope. Stop it. Get him, Jimmy. 
Wee! Ring around to Rosie. <laughs> go, 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 go. Keep running. No! Jimmy, Jimmy got this. Jimmy got this. Jimmy got this. Easy. No! Who? Who? Okay, easy may not be entirely accurate, but, you know, I'm not sure if that was good. Okay. Sir, you're right on top of that oh, sh**. I still have to... Fusion reactor must be nearby. I forgot that there's a lot of enemies in that room. You rang. Been waiting on you rang. Been waiting on Sell me. She sounds so excited when she says, You rang? No, Brenda. I did not ring. Don't mind me just walking my ultra list. Ah, there it is. Fire bet's actually good, man. Like, fire bets are pretty much terrible on every RTS game ever. Like, every game that has some sort of flamethrower, they're always trash. But in this mod, they've made them so good that they're like, I actually think they're a little overtuned. They're good. Yeah, they're actually useful. I think they're actually a little too good. Well, there's like these these are these are beefed up out of their minds, man. Is there still um I still need to gather a little bit more, don't I? There's still weapons and artifacts. Oh, I guess in the final final section in the escape part of this mission. Oh my god, that's going to be super hard. Whew, okay. It seems to just I lost a couple units, but not really that many. Oh, I missed one thing over there. Whoa. Can I still get it? These are cute ultras. Ooh. -woo. I don't know if you can say ooh. -woo. I don't know if that's allowed. I remember back in the day when the Runok in the chat used ooh. -woo. This was like 2012. One of the original weebs. The OWs. Yeah, nobody, nobody knew. Nobody knew what it meant at the time. You're more of an OWO kind of guy. All right. Ah! Jeez, dude. I was promised cute ultras. How is that cute? There was nothing cute about that thing. Yeah, what the hell, man? Okay, here's the cute ultras. Wait, I missed a weapon somewhere. Hello? Guys, the f door's not open. Okay, now it is. Wait, I m missed something somewhere! I did not actually get the full reward for this mission. I thought I picked up everything. Where did I miss something? Did you guys notice that I missed something? No one in the chat is calling me out for missing something, so I feel like... I didn't. Twitch chat never lies, right? Have you guys ever lied? Maybe I did miss something somewhere. I, I think I missed one consumable somewhere. Hello? How long does this... Ah, there you go. How long does it take to blow up? No, I didn't miss anything over here. Tch, 12 out of 13. That was one in the last section? I'm actually gonna load. Wait, the last one was near the end? You just walked by it? Oh, it was right at the very end end. I walked straight past it. What a loser. You imagine walking straight by the thing you're looking for. Normally, I, I'm like a hawk. I see everything on the screen. Never miss the smallest item. Haters will say that's fake. Was it that one? Guys. I had that one. 
Wait, you're everyone's calling me blind? But you thought I didn't have that one? The one you lost Jim Loco, you had it then? Wait, I'm confused. No, I don't have it. It says it in the top left. Collect weapons and artifacts. I'm missing one. The thing is not colored in. It would be colored in if I had it all. I have it? Wait. I have it? Wait, you I have it colored in if I had it all. I have it? Wait, you think I have it if I colored in? It would be colored in if I had it all. I have it? Wait, you think I have it if I How would I have it right now? It didn't color in. Okay. I got 13 out of 13. I don't know if I got trolled by the chat or the game or both at the same time. I can't believe I doubted Twitch shit there for a moment. Yeah, 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 that's true. I can't believe I doubted Twitch shit there for a moment. Yeah, 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 that's true. Embarrassing. I should never doubt Twitch shit. I doubt Twitch shit. Uh, one little video I wanted to share with you guys that I've watched like five times today because I thought it was hilarious. Apparently, they held a CSGO event in Australia. So, for those of you watching with kids or whatever, there's a whole lot of swearing in this video. I mean, I just said it's in Australia, right? So, I don't know why you're surprised. But this, oh my god, it cracked me up. So, apparently, they had a Counter-Strike event <laughs> in Australia. To Love you, chat. Just kidding. F*** you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's halfway through the round. I love you, Henry. That's uh, that's nice. Don't not take it out of it. Don't, don't. My one fan. Oh, that's that's back again. <laughs> Every night before bed, they're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. For some reason, the Australians always find creative ways. I think it's halfway through the round. I love you, Henry. That's uh, that's nice. Don't not take it out of it. Don't, don't. My one fan. Oh, that's that's back again. <laughs> Every night before bed, they're not wrong. <laughs> that's a new one. Thing which is you're welcome. Sir. Still. It's but so good. For some reason, the Australians always find creative ways to get swear words into regular conversation. I gotta say, man, it reminds me a lot of conventional sports, right? But uh, yeah, f you Overwatch, f you is pretty hilarious. F you Twitch Jet. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Yeah, the Aussies, the Aussies definitely know uh, how to swear. They, they've got a lot of practice. I guess it's just general conversation, right? But anyways, they're really good at it for sure. So Storm is really good at it for sure. So Stormgate developer interviews with Frost Giants. No way it's going to be in January. <laughs> RTS community reveal thing. <laughs> kind of keep the fire going for a little while longer, right? It's kind of like in the back of everyone's mind, and that <laughs> they've done a pretty great job so far.
I can get close enough, I can telepathically dominate the crew. Oh, dude, telepathic is dominant. I can get close enough. I can telepathically dominate the crew. Oh, dude, telepathic is dominant. Whoa. Take your request. Didn't know Ravens had that balloon. It's got cloak. Ha! Ah. Status report. Ha! Oh, I rapid fired it. Uh, that was unnecessary. I didn't realize I could cast multiples in one go. I thought I could only do like one at a time. I thought it had an individual cooldown, but apparently not. It's not funny, guys. Don't know why you're laughing. It's not funny, guys. Don't know why you're laughing. It's not funny, guys. Don't know why you're laughing. There's nothing funny about that. I just used my snipe on the medic. Oh, by the way, on the medic. Oh, by the way, I gotta show you guys. Speaking of Zelda, I thought this was hilarious. Speaking of Zelda. Thank you, uh, by the way, Pilgrim. Welcome. Appreciate you. Ah, right, here we go. This was on Facebook. Francis says, I know she's from a game. I don't play video games and I have no issue about representation but making Zelda a girl is a bit much. They're overreaching. That was pretty funny. Anyway, thank you, for, thank you very much, Pilgrim. I would like to think it's a troll. I found another gem actually this morning. Let me just <laughs> let me just let me just show you. I think the guy was serious but I, I actually believe that this was just someone actually like I'd like to think that this is a joke, okay? Just trying to create bait. But apparently, this is actually a list someone made. Most significant people in human history, second draft. This guy made a top 14 list of mo most significant people. Jesus, George Washington, Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, William Shakespeare, Martin Luther King Jr., Darwin, Aristotle, Steve Jobs, Michael Jordan, <laughs> Napoleon. <laughs> Jordan, Napoleon, and Da Vinci. Uh, there's a lot of questions here, but I like that Mr. Jordan made the list. Okay. Like, sure, there, you know, Genghis Khan may have, you know, done a, a bunch of things, right? But did he ever win basketball tournaments? <laughs> I also think it's kind of funny that Martin Luther King Jr. made it on the list, but not the OG Martin Luther. Anyways. This is just a complete meme, but I'd like to think that it's just complete bait and that someone made that just to try and get as much traction as possible. But I'm fairly sure, looking at some of the things, that he was actually serious. <laughs> That's so funny to me. That's someone so funny to me. That's funny to me. That someone thinks that <laughs> That's the list. That's the list. Uh, it's a very American list, though. I mean, Jesus in first is probably not too too weird, but Elon Musk didn't make the list either. Not a single woman on the list either, by the way, which is also uh, Gandhi. Gandhi is another one that's probably quite important. You know, there are also important people that definitely shaped history. 
you know, not good. They're not in a good way, but they certainly are influential. Yeah, Michael Jordan made the list, but Muhammad Ali didn't. Yeah, yeah did not. That's... <laughs> it's so funny. So funny, but he like 14 names. <laughs> so funny. But he like 14 names. That's what we get. That's so good. Yeah, how many points did Newton score in the NBA chat? What he, <laughs> he came up with calculus? Nobody likes calculus. Was it calculus he came up with? I don't know, math. Uh, but I like that there's a second draft as well, so like the original raft draft was even dumber. <laughs> I like to see the first draft. All the Roman emperors? No, it's just Caesar, man. Caesar is the only guy. That's probably the only name he knew, so he's like, ah, that's the one. So good. Caesar, yeah, Caesar's the one that made the salad. <laughs> I can't believe Tiger Woods wasn't on the list. I think making a list like that is very dangerous, but to call it second draft as well, it's kind of kind of funny that he like he considered it like over multiple days, and that's the best we could come up with. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Hey, buddy, are you also stranded here? It's like no, I don't want to be held. I just want to, you know. Hey, buddy. Oh, looking handsome. Looking real good. I'm actually going to move him because he's going to walk over my desk. Whoa. Come on. He turned around. So you guys can't see. Let me take a picture real quick. Here's what Toby did to my monitor. I think I can tilt it back. I think I can tilt it back. I think I can tilt it back. <coughs> I think I can tilt it back. Yeah, we should be good. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Things are looking fine. He also tilted this one somehow. Interesting. Interesting. Loco, you will be amazed by this. By this fascinating American dish. Dishwasher salmon, an American dish made with the heat from a dishwasher, particularly from its drying phase. Uh, I need, like, every minute we, we stray further from God. We, I, I, I'll, I'll need a moment. Why did you make a... Why did you make an American flag in the background? What's going on? First, we found out about the American dish of dishwasher salmon. And now you come out with this. I'm not quite over this yet, okay? You can't show me an American flag today. Man. Like, it's just... An American dish made with the heat. An American dish made with the heat from a dishwasher, particularly from its drying face. No, bro. An American dish made with the heat from a dishwasher, particularly from its drying face. No, bro. No, 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 no. This is too much. I can't handle any more. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Why do you still have that open, Loco? I don't know. Look, I'm just as disappointed as you. 
What are you guys even do? What are you guys even talking about? I look away for half a minute and I see someone talking about Alarex stepping on you. And I see someone talking about Alarex stepping on you. Guys, it's Monday. First few minutes of the Monday on Twitch. Already thirsty. Already thirsty. That took minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm surprised. Just disappointed. I still cannot fathom that the White Priestess was some sort of experiment. I don't know if Milo was biased. Milo took it up the microphone. Experiment. 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 <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Milo was biting. Milo turned the speaker volume up and it started going it's like since the volume of the speaker would go back through the microphone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's a DJ. It started, uh, it started looping. You okay, buddy? Oh my god, he's horrified. Here. I have a treat somewhere, mate. Yeah, he scared himself, he's horrified. Experiment. Yeah, he's a DJ. It started, uh, it started looping. You okay, buddy? Oh my god, he's horrified. Here. I have a treat somewhere, mate. Yeah, he scared himself, he's horrified. Experiment. I still cannot fathom that the White Priestess was some sort of experiment. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Milo was biting. 
Milo turned the speaker volume up and it started going it's like since the volume of the speaker would go back through the microphone. I have a treat somewhere, mate. Yeah, he scared himself. Don't worry. I can make him forget. Ooh, these are small ones, dude. That's like one big one broken into four pieces. Sorry, guys. Sorry guys for that uh, that noise. Cat problem. Bribe, I acknowledge. No, he made. I think he just moved and he accidentally turned the dial. He didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to give you guys a jump scare either, but that's how Loco solves all of his problems. I do spoil my cats quite a bit, yeah. The thing about cats though, is that like, if you spoil your kid too much, right? At some point, they're gonna have to go out into society and be a functioning adult, right? Preferably. But with cats, you know, <laughs> cats, you know. <laughs> my master volume, oh God. Oh shit. Okay, I think. When Milo jumped away, he also turned my microphone for you. Test, test, test. One, two, one, two. Is that better? Yeah. Should be good. Sorry about that. There's the. Sorry about that. There's the Leviathan thing. I don't really have a lot of anti air right now, which I don't really like. Oh, what? That was not mes necessary. Oh, God! What? Who? Oh! It's Uber Brenda. What's going on, Brenda? Who? Oh, it's Uber Brenda. What's going on, Brenda? That's not what I expected. I thought it was 69%. Yeah. 69% <laughs> is when the Leviathan spawns. 66%. Who? Oh, God, what? Who? Oh. Who? Oh, it's Uber Brenda. What's going on, Brenda? That's not what I expected. Yeah. Sixty-nine <laughs> percent is when the Leviathan spawns. Sixty-six percent is apparently when Brenda comes to play. So, Stormgate developer interview. So, Stormgate developer interviews with Frost Giant Studios. So, in case you're unfamiliar, Studios. So, in case you're unfamiliar, so in case you're unfamiliar, Frost Giant working on a game called Stormgate. I have. Studios. So in case you're unfamiliar, Frost Giant, they're currently working on a game called Stormgate. I have watched quite a few RTS games be in development right now. I watched a lot of videos, I've read quite a bit about it, and I think that Stormgate probably has the biggest potential to at some point overtake the StarCraft 2 community. We'll see if that's ever going to happen, because obviously the game isn't even in early access yet. Beta, I believe, is scheduled to start sometime next year. Uh, but anyways, I
there. Year. But anyways, I um I haven't seen this video. Um I um I um I haven't seen this video yet, so it's an interview with the Stormgate development team. Let's see. Tim and I have been uh talking talking about building an RTS for many years. This is something that, uh, it's a game that needs to be made. This is an audience that needs and deserves another big next step. Uh, and it's something that we have been wanting to make for so long. We just decided that this was a plunge we had to take. This was something that we had to do and, uh, and there was no other choice for us. Yeah, so Tim and Tim are the ones leading this company. Uh, so for those of you that have company, uh, leading this company. So for those of you that have, you know, never really followed this very much, essentially a lot of the people that worked on RTS games in the past at Blizzard Entertainment, but also at a bunch of other companies, they've moved on over and made their own company instead. And initially they didn't have that many, um, that many investors, obviously, but uh, they actually put the and initially, they didn't have that many um, that many investors, obviously, but uh, they actually put together a lot of money. Is mom watching? Yeah, she actually texted me earlier. She uh, she was watching. Anyway, but yeah, I um, I hope they can put together. Yeah, I, uh, I but yeah. She was watching. Anyway, but yeah, I hope they can put together an awesome game because they certainly have the people for it. They seem to now also have the money for it, and they seem to have the right mindset. So I've made a. Made a couple of videos in the past discussing what their what their aim. Made a made a couple of videos in the past discussing what they're what they're aiming to do, and I've done a developer interview as well with Monk, which was a lot of fun. And at the very least, you know, I, I don't want to get overhyped because that's sort of the thing. It's it's very easy to get overhyped, but I am cautiously overhyped. But I am. Cautiously optimistic. I think that's a good way to put it. It's been a year and a half journey for me so far between raising the financing, building the team, uh, and just getting the operational aspects of the company stood up. At the same time, we've had to build an engine, establish a vision for the gameplay, and also develop a whole new universe. We gotta move, now. There's a storm coming. The genre of RTS and StarCraft II in particular has had so much loyalty and so much stability in its core fan base that it is inspiring to think about how long RTS has been on the market and how mm -hmm. rarely big impactful RTS games get made for this audience. I understand the thought process um, at major publishers around real-time strategy. By nature of having- Yeah, the, the, money, the money is what they're thinking of, right? I'm pretty sure that's what Tim is going to say. Basically, AAA developers are looking at their titles like, can this make titles? They're like, can this make one billion dollars? And they're like, mm, one billion dollars may as well release the same game another time. <coughs> Overwatch 2. <coughs> Anyways, will they will they make a billion dollars making an RTS game? Unlikely. Can you make a lot of money making an RTS game? Sure. Like. There is a large audience out there, and while RTS is by no means the most popular genre in 2022, it's not like, you know, there's no people interested in it. As a matter of fact, I see interested in it. As a matter of fact, I see tons of people that still watch a lot of StarCraft 2 and, you know, there's a lot of people that play Warcraft 3 and Age of Empires and all the other RTS games that are out there. It's, percentage-wise, a much smaller part of the gaming market than it was 20 years ago, but in absolute numbers, the people are still certainly there. Reach the scale that they have. Womp womp. There's an ex womp womp. Sacrament of the money should be enough for lunch, I think.
there's an expectation that they're going to focus on the most predictable successes that they can. Um, mm -hmm. Public companies, their shareholders expect that from them, and it's smart from a business perspective. For us, being so passionate about this genre, the question we ask ourselves is not, is this the way that we can maximize return on investment? The question we ask ourselves is, can we make something great that we believe players will love and that we will be proud of at the end of the day? Um, and that's the freedom that comes from being at a smaller company. We're just lucky to be in a position where we can focus on what mm -hmm. we're really passionate about. Our goal is rooted in the personal level. It's rooted in what we love. This is rooted in what we feel. We're not reading off of some spreadsheet and saying the best calculus for us to reach success, to reach the most revenue is by going into this category and doing this sort of microtransaction and boom, let's somehow make a game that kind of sort of supports that. We knew there were two possible approaches we could take. One approach was completely throw out everything that's come before with RTS and try to reimagine the genre as something new. The other approach is to take everything that's come before and try to make improvements based on the feedback that we've gotten working on those things. Um, and we very much took that approach. One mm -hmm. of the things I love most about RTSs is that you can play them in so many different ways. And none of the ways is the right way, the one mode to, to rule them all, right? RTSs have a huge, rich history in competitive play, but they're also really well known for incredibly strong stories told through campaigns. Uh, you can look at a game like StarCraft and you can see um, what? such an incredibly strong cooperative mode there. A lot of players they find PvP. wait starcraft isn't just one versus one no way no i i like everything they're saying right no way no i i like No, I, I like everything they're saying. Shout out to you, Thermal and Mana. SC2 challenges and the results. F is going on from 4th of October 2008. An audience of just <sighs> Yeah, here, look, there's the cinema. I've actually done a little bit of research. Cool, but they've actually. <laughs> the next one is. So that's quite significant. That would actually be. Days equals no passion. You got 90. Oh my god. Who wants to get sucked by the vortex? Everybody get close together. What? I'll be like, hey, bonjour, uh, je veux une uh, croissant. The abilities are not working. Buttercruise. Uh, cro In my keyboard. You can have them. <laughs> it's so. I. <laughs> you know the worst part is? It would actually work. I can almost guarantee you that it would work. It's so painful. This is too cringe. I can't. I can't. I can't. But I'm sure it would work. We're not at. They hit air and ground. That I need to add their abilities to life crisis. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep using. <laughs> Two pizza. Percent alcohol by. It's like ah, whatever. As long as it burns going down. Poor Jimmy over here. Man. Improves the healing rate. <laughs> I sound like Mickey. Oh, these abilities are amazing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I could, I could, yeah. I was just excited about the frigate, okay? Tigus is going. Wait, improves the healing rate? I can't wait to dig into that. Sure. He's a little. Nukes! Good voice acting. My repeated. Sing to the music. 
Oh my god. My character is completely blighted out of her mind, by the way. She's even growing tentacles now. Oh, I can... So that's a... Jump as a bunny. Bet priestesses. Uh, uh, like, all of those words made sense, but not in the... Yeah, I can... I can open... Like, okay. <laughs> words. So hopefully people will think I sound cool. I obviously have no idea what that's like. So I can... I can open... Like, okay. <laughs> words. Like, all of those words made sense, but not in that order. Low code. I was killed by by. How does this asking questions is not? I've gone to the dark side. What what is going? <laughs> Alright, nice. Oh, it deals splash damage. I think Marauders are- She sounds so excited when she says, You rang? No, Brenda. I did not ring. Don't mind me, just- What's up? Let- It's an art of you. Nobody knew what it meant at the time. The smallest item. Haters will say- From where? Half time. You're more- I promise ultras. How? What the hell? Nothing cute about that thing. Wait, I missed something. So. What the hell? It's one consumable somewhere. The smallest diet. I haven't. Know if I. Oh my god! It cracked. Our conversation. Someone made. That's someone. I think I can tilt it back. I still cannot fathom that the White Priestess was some sort of experiment. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Milo was biting. <laughs> Milo turned the volume. <laughs> it, yeah. The thing about cats, though, is. <laughs> oh! It's Uber Brenda! What the. No, I, I like everything. No way. No, I, I like everything they're saying, right? So I, I think they make a very good point that like if you're a publicly traded company and you have a gajillion people working for you and a ton of shareholders that have invested their money, they're going to obviously want you to guarantee some sort of investment in, in return, right? It makes sense. So you'll have a lot of companies just releasing the safest possible games that they can come up with. And generally the way that like in AAA developing that they do their... Their, their risk taking, I suppose, right, is that they buy smaller online studios. So generally speaking, it seems right now that the indie studios are the ones that, that like release cool stuff, that take risks and that make, you know, unique projects. And then usually, so generally, So generally speaking, it seems right now that the indie studios are the ones that like release cool stuff, that take risks and that make, you know, unique projects. And then usually those smaller studios get bought by AAA developers. And then they'll release, you know, a game that is once again similar to the previous one. But yeah, I, I like everything that... But Yeah, I, I like everything that they're saying here so far. Uh, this is K Dong. Yes, K Dong. P really intimidating, 
but with the co-op experience where you're just like, kind of beating up on an AI player, you know, that's that's very approachable. And not only that, um, your your friend who is maybe more experienced can bring you in, onboard you, um, and kind of show you the ropes. We really believe that games have moved from being solitary experiences to being social experiences. 100%. There's been tremendous evolution, whether you look at MOBA or Battle Royale or even experiences like Roblox that are inherently social um, that bring people together in a game world or through a game experience. Um, RTS has offered some multiplayer modes before, and, and we added two-player co-op with Legacy of the Void to StarCraft II. Um, but there really hasn't been an RTS designed from the ground up with facilitating social experiences in mind. And for us, um, you know, in the campaign, it's now possible. So social, for those of you wondering, usually means interacting with other humans. So rather than just sitting by yourself and just shouting at your computer and occasionally breaking a keyboard or a mouse, you actually have to like interact with other humans. It's terrifying. I know I hate it. Operatively, our formerly two-player co-op mode in StarCraft II is Ugh. now touching grass with others and co-op experience in Stormgate. One of the things we're looking into for three-player co-op is the idea of uh, soft role differentiation. We want players to be able to, um, to, to be able to fill the roles that they feel very comfortable in. We kind of already have that in a way with StarCraft II co-op um, where some commanders are better at defending, some, better, some commanders are better at attacking, but we want to really emphasize that uh, in Stormgate. We want to say maybe an experienced player can just build the army, can take care of the threats, whereas a more newbie player, someone who's new to the game, Does um, is able to kind of just expand, build oh. their bases, defend their bases, and support their ally. Competitive PvP in Stormgate will consist I, of two I thought I thought modes. the reason to have a team will consist I, of... I, will consist I, of I thought, I thought the reason to have a teammate is so you could blame them if you end up failing. But that's okay. Never mind. There's going to be the one v one mode, which is going to appeal to the core RTS audience, the core audience that really is into esports and really into the journey to mastery. Uh, we're also going to have a looser three v three PvP team battle mode in which you can bring in friends um, and have a lot of fun there. Story uh, is near and dear to my heart personally, as well as many people on the team. And I want to answer um, the question about whether or not we're going to support story, whether or not we're going to have a campaign mode, or what that's going to look like. Yes, they will. And I want to say unequivocally yes, that we are absolutely. <laughs> I think I've been very clear as far as that goes. Story. We are delivering campaigns that you can play single player. You can also. I play need his role. upper body workout <laughs> regimen. <laughs> you mean Kedong? Kedong and me are basically Instagram best friends, okay? Who's that sexy boy we are watching right now? And who's that guy with the cap and beard? <laughs> all right, all right, Zengard, calm down, sir. Thank you for the resub. Um, Kato are basically Instagram best friends, okay? Who's that sexy boy we are watching right now? And who's that guy with the <laughs> cap and beard? All right, all right, Zengard, calm down, sir. Thank you for the resub. Um, Kato. Sir, thank you for the resub. Um, resub. Kato actually does these days. Does a lot of uh, climbing these days. He does a lot of powerlifting and climbing. It's pretty cool. Which is a new addition to the genre. I think it's going to bring something new to the table where you can experience these these stories not just by yourself, which is fantastic if that's how you want to do it, but you can also share thank them you. with a friend. And in my experiences. Cooperative experiences bring a lot of just additional value, additional enjoyment to the table. And so as a team, co-op is something that we believe in. And, and finding a way to weave that into the story is going to be really important to Stormgate. Oh, this is from the trailer. I thought we had new things. Yeah, I think most people thought the trailer was all right, but it wasn't necessarily mind-bogglingly amazing, right? I actually don't know if it's amazing, right? Amazing. I actually don't know if it was necessarily the best idea to go with like a realistic view, because you know, in that way, you're kind of directly competing with companies that have uh, 
a significantly bigger cinematic budget. So I'm not entirely sure if that was the smartest idea. But anyways, update on story and races. So all kinds of terrible things are happening on Earth. Uh, we've got overpopulation. We've got climate change. We have extreme weather. Uh, is he talking about the game or real life? And all of these things have been a very perilous position. Uh, so one of the things I'd like to talk about, if it's all right, is... A Flint's Arcade. Is this the thing in SoCal? Or is this a thing in the game? Flint's Arcade is something That's in the strong. Tron movies? Uh, or is this a thing in the game? Flynn's Arcade is something S in the Tron Storm. movies? Oh, Gate. okay. All right, never mind. I thought we had like a cheeky little, cheeky little Easter egg over here. But, but fine, but fine. Thank you very much, Ballistical. Science program? But fine, but fine. But, but fine, but fine. Science program that humanity up, sorry, has sorry. initiated. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. I'm going to go back. Yo, Selkart, thank you as well. Starting up the hype train. Nice. Important to Storm King. Initiated I'm, I'm gonna... Oh, well, fine, well, fine. Is this the thing in SoCal? Or is this... True. Climate change. Things are happening on Earth. Alright, never mind. I thought... All right, is a Flint's arcade. Is this the thing in SoCal, or is this a thing in the game? Flint's arcade. Little Easter egg over here. Well, well, fine. Well, it's all right. So one of the things I'd like to talk about: all of these things have put humanity in a mission with True. climate change. True. We have extreme weather. True. And all of these things have put humanity in a position true uh, so one of the things i'd like to talk about if it's uh, it's all right is a sign uh, uh, so one of the things i'd like to talk about if it's all right is a sign flint's arc uh, so one of the things i'd like to talk about if it's all right is, is he talking about the game or is uh, anyway is a science program science Humanity has initiated to try and address these problems. It's called Sigma. And this ties into the Stormgates, uh, the name of the game. So the Sigma program, uh, there are different branches of the Sigma program. Sigma 6 is act actually part of the program that happens in the art. Okay, dong! Get out the and frame! What they're trying to do is open up a portal to another dimension. So basically, so humanity could escape if they need to, to get away when the Earth becomes uninhabitable. So they're actually able to do that. They open this portal. It happens during a solar storm in the Arctic. Uh, but what they did is they opened a doorway to basically the infernal homeworld. We all come from different backgrounds as far as okay. games we worked on. Okay, so hold up. Basically, humanity is not doing so hot, and they're like, mm, let's mess with doing so hot, and they're like, mm, so hot and you're like mm, let's mess around and they accidentally open the portal to another world and now demons are flooding it okay it's like a portal to char no 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 it's to the infernal whatever it's called and studios and stuff like that so we all come in with i mean at this point i wouldn't be surprised if that actually happens during a solar storm someone's messing around on the north pole and you know somehow they're Remember summoning in demons your prime sub i think you kill thank you i'm sub i think you kill thank you also hayden sell car appreciate you plan and then as we're kind of working through things we come up with a lot of I'll come from different uh, but what they did is they opened a doorway to basically the infernal homeworld we all come from different backgrounds as far as games we worked on and at different studios and stuff like that so we all come in with kind of our own plan and then as we're kind of working through
things we come up with a lot of different ideas as a group the, the ideas are better as a group I'm finding uh, I, we go into a lot of things we're designing and I'm like okay I got a plan for what I want this to be uh, and then as the concept artists kind of get their th thoughts into it we all kind of it's always pluses that and then the modelers get it and then they have ideas that they want to add on to it and so it's kind of a, a group uh, design in a way with the humans with the very curvilinear designs and stuff like that kind of the sleek feel but then kind of as we're diving more into it we want kind of a bit more beaten down kind of look and so we're still kind of figuring a lot of that out uh, right now and so uh, we all just have what's neat is we're all bringing our own influences in and that's what's really nice about being at a smaller studio is like everybody can kind of get their own flavor into the suit in a way so so the mechs are part of the advanced technology that we're going to see in the game and we'll see all kinds of things Things, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a mixture of things that we're very familiar with that really haven't changed very much and technology that has moved forward and has progressed and the mechs are part of that. You know, the way we talk about it is basically mechs were originally built to help with, you know, construction projects and things like that, uh, but obviously they're being used against the infernals and it helps when you have something that's just as big and powerful as an infernal to go up against it as we saw in the cinematic. We're okay. trying to really think like- So not a particularly it... unique story, right? Like, story, right? Like, yeah, it's, I mean, we've, we've heard similar stories like this many times before. Technology will be before the apocalypse yeah, really safe. happens and then kind of rediscovering that technology in the process. Uh, we're just now kind of getting to like, what is, what is the world like that is not the factions that are fighting it, but the people that are still living there? Uh, is, is it all beaten down and they're just in little tents here and there? Are they still rebuilding? Do they have buildings that are still existing? And so we're trying to give this kind of lived in kind of vibe. Um, and I'm hoping not to tell like a story artistically that's just like everyone's just waiting to die. Like I want it to feel like humanity is prospering um, in in groups and in clusters that the human faction is trying to keep protected. There's no way that would ever happen, though. If, like, we were in a life-or-death scenario, sure, there's going to be some people sitting around just waiting to die. But, like, the vast majority of people are problem solvers, right? They're actually going to try and get things done, even even though things may not necessarily look particularly good. But then also learn from, like, what humanity has done in the past, uh, being able to harness mother nature in a way that's sustainable and it's not just like uh continuing to keep and keep taking and stuff like that so we're looking at like what would they do for wind energy or sun energy or other other ways that we nuclear thought of with a like uh say nuclear algae growth for like oh. food and stuff like that and it's it's a okay, lot then. of thinking about things and talking about it that we then it's yeah maybe artistic. we can harvest the infernals they seem like things like we, anyways we then go in and try to build that in the, the designs of the world and stuff so infernals have been here before oh you'll notice that they look demonic they're not demons in the judeo-christian sense of demons what we on earth know as demons they're an otherworldly race that basically goes from one planet to another and they take resources uh, they take some of the best fighters on that planet so like, and they basically turn them into warriors to join the Infernal Army. Like the, the Infernal Legion? Army is all about numbers, all about, you know, brutality and, and mass numbers and, and uh, savage tactics to take over their, their enemies, which they view as the, the worlds that they're invading. Yeah, it's very similar to We're the Burning Legion. We're still exploring what the Infernal look is I, I love the idea and we've talked about this a lot of what if the the what we know as a demon now is basically cave paintings and everything handed down and and so it's not just the 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 demon we know that's red with horns but somebody saw a millennia ago a demon and then that is what got evolved through like the passage of time and then okay word of mouth over time that's what it became that we know of you know, we haven't really gotten into the characters yet. We saw a couple of characters, you know, we saw the, the archaeologist in the announcement cinematic, 
we saw the mech, we heard the voice of the person who's piloting the mech, but we have some really amazing characters that we've been spending a long time to flesh out and to give really amazing arcs. So um, that's tricky, right? When it comes to like storytelling, I think broadly there's like the world and the setting, then there are the characters, and then you have the plot, right? The, the actual story. I think the world, pretty cool. Nothing mind-boggling, but it's... Like, one problem you run into with story oftentimes, uh, especially in games, is that you kind of write yourself in a corner. And at some point, you have no story to tell anymore, so they just stop telling stories or they kind of, like, force it. So you don't really want to have, like, a finished ending. Yeah, exactly. Like, that. Finished ending. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the problem you run into. Like, it turns into a love story very easily. I don't mind if there's a love story or anything like that, but it should probably be, like, a subplot rather than, like, the main storyline. So, world seems... okay. Um, they're very complex characters, and I think when people start to learn about those characters' journeys and how that's going to fit into some really amazing gameplay, I think people are going to be very excited. We do these... Uh, I don't think linearity. we're going to find out much about characters and the actual plot until the release of the game, though. We need a Donnie Vermillion, yeah, love story. That's all I really need. Things were Mickey and Tim. Things were Mickey and Tim kind of explore like what the what the story is and the whole background and everything like that. And it is so much bigger than I had in my head. Like it, I was, it was very simplified for me when we started. It's like oh, it's going to be this and and there is this millennia of history that they have figured out and everything like that. And kind of artistically being able to eventually get to all that and explore it as a team uh, is really exciting to me. So Stormgate, we're designing to really be a game that continues to evolve and move forward every single year that you're playing it. Um, on the story side, we'll be able to unveil new twists and new turns and new characters for players to interact with every single year as we're going forward. And that's going to take form in, uh, in episodic content. We will be mm -hmm releasing additional campaigns on a regular cadence as we move forward. And so there will always be the steady flow of new stories, new interactions. Yeah, so that's awesome. that's what they mentioned some time ago, that there's like things coming out seasonally and whatever, however long a season is, I don't think it's determined just yet, but basically like with the start of a new season, you have seasonally. And whatever, however long a season is, I don't think it's determined just yet. But basically, like, with the start of a new season, you have, like, a new campaign, you have new co-op content, you maybe have, like, a new balance patch or, like, new things added to the multiplayer. And I think that's actually really quite clever, because not only does that mean you have continuous updates and continuous content whenever you're playing, but it's also clever because you know, as, like, a returning player, when new stuff is going to be available. Like, for example, I... Available. Like, for example, I play Path of Exile from time to time, and I will pretty much always start playing again when I see there's a little bit of hype around the new season starting, right? And I think they're basically trying to replicate that in this game, too. Like, you always know that within a couple months, there's a new PoE season. A lot of people are going to give it a try when the new season begins. Obviously, you know, that's when these companies will make their, their income, right? <laughs> How they actually sustain themselves. And I, I would imagine, like, if they, I don't know, maybe three times a year or whatever, they release like another bunch of missions they release like another they release like another co-op map and a co-op commander or whatever maybe a balance overhaul it can really easily coincide as well with tournament play so say like rather than going with a yearly calendar for tournament play you go with like a every four months or so type of deal or like you know every two seasons or whatever but like there certainly is a lot of potential there and i think it's smart Awesome missions to be playing uh, for people who love that. But even beyond story in all aspects, Stormgate is a game that is designed to be ever evolving. We will be um, releasing new content on a regular cadence. We will be introducing new characters that can be played in the form of heroes uh, on the team side and on the co op side. Um, we'll be introducing new maps and constant. Wait, 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 what? Sorry, say again? The team side and on the co-op side. Okay, so new heroes on the team's side, which I think he means 1v1 and 3v3? 
not 100% sure. Played in the form of heroes uh, on the team side and on the co-op side. So, so far they've talked about campaign and like co-op, 1v1, 3v3. So I'm assuming maybe heroes are not going to be a part of the... Th um, we'll be introducing new maps and constantly churning the, the map pool on the competitive side, introducing balance changes. This is a torch that we're carrying forward well into the future. And we're, we're building this game to have legs so that it's something that players can know and love for many years. With StarCraft II, uh, we've learned a lot of lessons over the years. Um, I've spent a lot of time at BlizzCons and things like that, standing behind players who are- This is, by the uh, way, a very- This is by the way, behind players. This is, by the way, a very relaxed video, right? Like, it's a really laid-back, mature video, right? Like, it's a really... Late back mature video. It's not like, what's up, guys? Welcome, Stormgate. Ah, buy it, get the season pass. Like, it's yeah, it's very chill. Um, you know, playing the game for the first time and, and watching them play uh, and seeing sort of the struggles that they have. How do we get those people into the game? How do we make it uh, a little bit easier for them to kind of get into the groove, get into the fun? K Dong of playing the game as quickly as possible. Part of what we're trying to do is just look for the areas that are creating friction that are intimidating uh, and polish those, not take away the depth, not take away the high skill aspect of the game, not make this baby's first RTS or a dumbed down real time strategy game. But Good. at the same time, try to put ourselves back into the mindset of what it's like to be a new player coming in um, and what were the things that we found intimidating or challenging um, and improve those. Anecdotally, as a dev, when I was on StarCraft II, um, I heard a lot of stories uh, from like people just on the street, like meeting like you, for example. Um, and I asked them, oh, do you know about StarCraft? They're like, yeah, I hear, I've heard about StarCraft. Do you play StarCraft? Yes, I've played StarCraft. Uh, how did you get into StarCraft? And they answer back, oh, my, my friend got me into StarCraft. And this has been a very common occurrence over the past like five or so years of my life. How do people come to the game? And uh, we think a lot of people come in because their friends are pulling them in or they're recommending them. So what can we do to en enhance the onboarding experience when you're playing with your friend? Oh, who's, who's trying to bring you in? Is there, is there things that we can- Kadong even brought his dog. Then have their friend wait while they try a tutorial, being able to learn how to play the game with your friend at the same time that they're playing a mission, um, perhaps giving you pointers um, is powerful. Um, what are some of the things about actually <laughs> playing the game that are a huge barrier to teaching. I feel like Kevin is in about half of the shots of this entire video. <laughs> how to play. What are some of the things about playing the game that make it um, something that people might feel is too overwhelming to continue to play once they learn? Like, how can we make it so that people feel really comfortable getting into that groove of having the, the fun and engaging with the strategy inside the game? We know that players also struggle um, even once they've, they've learned the basics um, because there's so many different uh, micromanagement tasks that are required to even just play the game at even a basic level um, that we really want uh, to kind of smooth and improve uh, as we can over time. Control groups are something that are critically important to RTS games, not just StarCraft II, but pretty much every RTS game uh, in existence relies upon... Yeah, so control, control groups uh, for the Protoss players in the chat, you know how like when you hit F2 and you select your all arm? Yeah, so control, control groups... Uh, So control groups for the Protoss players in the chat, you know how like when you hit F2 and you select You know how like when you hit F2 and you select your old army, you can also manually make control groups Specifically, okay, so no, no. Control groups, specifically, okay, so no, 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 sorry. Control groups allow you to sort of um, group a set of units and then press a single hotkey to select those units. And then right, so just, that's also in StarCraft too. to clarify. That's already there. That's already in the current game. Them orders and things like that. But that's actually a really difficult thing to teach players. One yeah, of the Protoss players in particular. Stormgate 
is to have these control groups be automated. Um, so as soon as a unit comes out of a, a barracks or a factory or something like that, um, it will automatically be added to a control group. And that makes it really easy for- Jeremy, please not do the control groups vertically. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm blocking it with my camera right now, but- Camera right now, but all right now, but dude, I am gonna be an old man by the time that this game comes out, and everything that's even remotely different is right now, but. Dude, I am going to be an old man by the time that this game comes out and everything that's even remotely different is going to bother me. For us to, to teach new players this, this whole approach of hitting all of these different things to make sure that we have a social experience when people get into the game. No, we, no, no, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. So that the game feels, uh, has some amount of virality so that people want to bring in their friends to play because there's something to play with their friends. Um, and so that once their friends come in, the game feels easier to onboard through tutorialization or... Um, special maps that might make it easier to learn to play alongside your friend, or uh, some of these UI tools that we've talked about, like automated control groups that um, make it easier to to kind of get into the the meat of playing the game and having fun. You're and, right, Black Soul City. Some of the mechanical barrier, maybe to a little bit later in, in your career as a player. Back I in my been... day, I could only hotkey 12 units at a time, and now everything gets added to a control group automatically? <laughs> developing this type of game for many, many years. And I am constantly blown away by the quality and the variety and just the innovation of the types of maps and mods that the community comes up with when we release tools to them. User-generated content is an incredibly important part of, of RTS games, uh, especially you know coming from Blizzard RTS game background. Uh, right. Warcraft 3 is maybe the greatest mod platform that ever existed. And in entire genres spawned from there. Some of the most successful games of all time, Dota, you know, League of Legends, these things came from Warcraft 3, essentially. Um, when you open up a new map in our editor, just like Warcraft 3 or Starcraft 2, you're gonna see terrain. And so be the first thing you see is a bunch of, of dirt. And you're gonna be able to immediately start raising cliffs and, and placing trees and you know putting units down on it. You need to be able to get in there and you're gonna be able to see that terrain right away so that you can start to feel comfortable in the context of what you're doing. We need an approachable interface. We need a lobby system where people can clearly see the th other things people are playing so that that, that uh, momentum can happen for games where you see people playing, you hop in, that game gains some popularity, the word starts to spread. And we also know that it needs to be super easy for people to create and share maps very quickly so that they can get their friends in because that's a really encouraging thing as a developer. For most RTS games, uh, when you want to launch the editor to make a map, you actually have to go, you, you, don't, you don't do it within the game itself. You actually have to go into Windows, find the folder for the game, and there will be a separate application that you launch to, to create a game. By putting it directly in the game, even at the top level, so you have campaign, co-op, create something, that's something that we really want to achieve because it'll get so many more people to try out these tools. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also puts a lot of impetus on us in order to make sure the tools are, are really uh, first class experience as well. Stormgate is absolutely free to play. Okay, so this is, I think, probably the most important part, right? Like business model. So they announced that they're gonna do things specifically in seasonal ways, right? That's cool. But how does that work specifically for, like, say, a one versus one? Because I think they said they're launching with like two factions, so like the Infernals and the Humans. I think that means that they are planning on adding on a, a third faction at a later time. But a fourth faction, a fifth faction, are we going to get to the point where it's going to be like, I don't know, eight factions battling it out? Sure, that's possible in other games, like, for example, in Age of Empires. Games, like, for example, in Age of Empires. But realistically, other games, like, for example, in Age of Empires. But realistically speaking, I kind of feel that StarCraft really has nailed it with three factions in total. Um, Monetization-wise, though, it is really tricky to continuously 
you know, sustain that business model. So, yeah, I'm not 100% sure how they're planning on doing that. So I'm hoping he's going to tell us something about that. They'll probably also have different, like, heroes and whatnot. So I guess heroes are probably going to be part of the game too, where maybe, maybe you can, like, with the start of a new season, buy a new hero. Hello, chat, logo. I came back to live after one unfortunate trumpet incident. I just wanted to say, even after my death, the unsubscribe button is nowhere to find. <sighs> Figaro, you can't just casually a new hero. Hello, chat. That. Uh, anyways, thank you for the seven months. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, exactly. So balance, balance is a nightmare. A new hero. Yeah, exactly. So balance, balance is a nightmare. Even when you have four factions. Like in Warcraft 3, for example, there's technically four factions, but it's, it's always incredibly delicate to balance that properly. One way, I guess, to solve that is to just constantly release new stuff so nobody knows what balance is looking like anyways. But I don't know. I like the idea of, of mastery, right? Like even after a decade of Terran units being mostly unchanged, at least broadly speaking, people are still squeezing more and more juice out of them. And yeah, I, I think that's, so it, it's definitely, I hope he's going to say something about that. To go free to play is rooted entirely in our desire to tear down barriers to the RTS genre. We want players to come in and experience the genre that we love. We want to bring not just current fans of RTS, we want to bring, bring people who maybe remember playing an RTS many years ago, but who lapsed and we want to bring them back. We want to bring in new players. And so lowering that price point barrier to free to play is rooted in making our community healthier and bringing more players in here. But then allowing people to buy more content of the types that they want. So this is something that is entirely opt-in. You can play all these different modes without paying for content there. But if you want more of different types of content, then you can vote with your dollars and you can support us to continue making that type of content for you we are absolutely not so for a competitive game like i like that i like that for a casual game right but exactly like a game but exactly like it becomes very dicey if you know you're playing orcs and suddenly blade master is behind a paywall and you're like haha there's a new hero is behind it's very dicey Exactly, like, it becomes... It becomes very dicey if... You know, you're playing orcs and suddenly Blade Master is behind a paywall. And you're like, haha, there's a new hero that just came out and I can't afford it right now. So how am I ever going to be competitive? Um, obviously, there's a chance that they just don't do that for the competitive game modes. Do that for the competitive game modes. <laughs> All DLC is Protoss. Terran and Zerk are free to play, but the DLC is Protoss. You unlock the carrier. Ah, oh, man, I only ever had Vikings. No, but seriously, it is a real concern. Like, I, I don't know how they're ever going to do that for a competitive style game. I mean, I guess they do that in MOBAs. But generally what they do when MOBAs release new heroes is, or new champions or whatever they're called, right? Is they make them like 10% like too strong and then everyone buys it. And then, like, they scale it back 10% with the next balance patch. Um, I'm sure... The next balance patch. I'm sure... I, I don't know if next balance patch. I'm sure... I don't know if that's intentional, but I'm sure that that is something they're well aware of. But how in the world are you... Yeah, how in the world are you gonna... Balance... In the world are you... Yeah, how in the world are you gonna... Balance that properly? Because it's, it's a bit of a meme otherwise. Although I guess in a game like a MOBA, you already have like a hundred different champions to choose in. So it doesn't really matter too much if you're missing a couple. And obviously there's a, a veto and like a banning system and all that, but... 
Hmm. Pay to win. I don't need to say no NFTs again. System and all that, but. Pay to win. I don't need to say no NFTs again, but there is no NFTs. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. loot boxes. Dude, when they first announced this game, NFTs were still a thing. Remember those things, guys? <laughs> For example, we get asked loot boxes all the time. Does free to play mean that you're doing some sort of coercive loot box uh, monetization scheme? And no, that's not what we're doing. I can okay. put that, that concern to ease. Is a free to play is about bringing more players into RTS so that we can all have fun playing this game together. We that would be the ultimate meme, dude. If they introduce loot boxes in the game and it never releases in the Netherlands, <laughs> we that would be the ultimate meme, dude. If they introduce loot boxes in the game and it never releases in the Netherlands. <laughs> for, those for those of you unfamiliar, there's a bunch of games that did not release in the Netherlands because of loot boxes. <laughs> that would, uh, yeah, that would be an interesting situation to be in. That would, uh, yeah, that would be an interesting situation to be in. <laughs> Learned a lot taking StarCraft II free to play in 2017. The thing that we saw when we did that was that the player base substantially increased. Um, and as, as a developer, of course, we want more people to experience what we build, but even for the health of the player community, that bigger player base is critical. I mean, it's like part of our core mission with Stormgate to bring RTS to more players. So. It just makes sense uh, for us to be free to play, uh, but it's important for us to approach that in a way that avoids the potential pitfalls of that business model. We want to make sure that we're thinking about esports for Torch. from the player perspective. Um, in a lot of games, esports is seen as this high pinnacle of Dude. just the most elite players. Torch got his button shirt and iron and everything ready to go just for this this one on one. Hell yeah, man! Business people world are engaging with this and then everyone else is relegated to watching by the way yes for those of you wondering uh a button sh for those of you wondering wondering a button shirt in esports and in gaming in general that is the pinnacle of dressing up okay if you're gonna put on like a sports coat or whatever or even dress shoes you're already too far there's a very good chance that torch is wearing the button shirt but still shorts as well at the same time because you know otherwise it's, it's too much. We don't see it that way. We see it as just another way of engaging with uh, the best that you personally can do and pushing yourself to new limits. So when we're thinking about esports and ways that players can engage, we want to look at it in all the different aspects and find things that really speak to different skill levels of players and different types of, of engaging with the game. Stormgate's integrated esports system is really trying to make it so that getting involved with your first competition is super simple and super uh, approachable. Once you've gotten involved and gotten that taste of competition, we're looking to surface as Thank much you. information as we can to help players understand what did they do well in a game? What did they maybe misstep and, and um, miss a proper strategy or proper execution so that they can then figure out, okay, if I want to practice and get better, here's the way to do it. And maybe that's going to involve uh, surfacing some content from creators that are really getting involved in the community as well. And we want to make sure there's these touch points that bring the player's enthusiasm and desire to go deeper into the rest of the community and, and build something that feels really strong for everyone involved. So if you're coming in toward the path to pro and you just want to have a good casual experience with your friends, that's something that we want to reward and make available to you. However, if you want to grow in your experience and try to actually push yourself to your, your personal limits, maybe try to go professional, we want to make sure that you're getting really high quality competition against other players of similar skill so that you're getting awesome practice and you're able to, to push yourself uh, and, and continue to grow. And that will go through a very predictable and a very uh, approachable path to pro experience, getting you up to the point that you're on broadcast and, and developing fans and able to speak to uh, the people that are loving the strategies that you're creating and the skill that you're able to show uh, the rest of the world and the rest of the community. We can build this uh, approachable circuit that finds the best players, teaches them what, what they need to do to level up their game, and then displays these really cool narratives that we're going to be building year, year round to uh, show high quality entertainment to the viewers. Um, this starts from tournaments that we're going to be running ourselves, but it also integrates third party 
uh, competitions that we'll be supporting in many different ways so that anywhere in the world that someone's playing from, they're going to be able to show their skill and show themselves being better than uh, their competitors and getting onto that main stage. We feel a burden to try to live up to the expectation. <sighs> so it's all, it all sounds good. Like uh, all of the things that they're saying sound good. I don't really have any, yeah, any main concerns from these things other than what I've already addressed. I really think cautiously optimistic is the best way to, to go about it because, you know, obviously there's no game yet at this point, but they seem to be, they seem to be on the right track. ...that players have, and we have our work cut out for us on that front. The best way that... <laughs> the... I like your words, Magic Man. <laughs> yes, I like all the words they're saying. We don't really know too much about the exact execution, but the words... I like them. The community and players who are interested in Stormgate can help us is by providing feedback, and that's possible to do by participating in the subreddit, which is... So it's all, it all sounds good. Like, uh, all of the things that they're saying sound good. I don't really have any... Yeah, any main concerns from these things other than what I've already addressed. I really think cautiously optimistic is the best way to, to, to go about it, because, you know... Obviously, there's no game yet at this point, but they seem to be, they seem to be on the right track. ...that players have, and we have our work cut out for us on that front. The best way that... <laughs> the... I like your words, Magic Man. <laughs> yes, I like all the words they're saying. We don't really know too much about the exact execution, but the words... I, I like... Community. I like them. The community and players who are interested in Stormgate can help us is by providing feedback, and that's possible to do by participating in the subreddit, which is slash our Stormgate, uh, and also looking for opportunities to both participate in the beta uh, and to participate in other feedback sessions that we hold between now and the launch of the product. The RTS community is is the best. That's why we're here. That's why this company was founded. That's why this Tim, game is Tim, I'm already going to make content for your game, okay? You don't have to... Tim, 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 come on, Tim, come on. ...being made and why all of this incredible team have come together to make this. It's because of you. It's because of this community. Tim, uh, And come so on. I, I just want to encourage you and say thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I can't wait to, to see where this adventure goes and hope that we live up to everything that you're wanting to see here. You... You, the community, are our North Star and why we're building this. So uh, thank you for all the support, and let's go and, and make a great game together. Okay, that was actually way more heartfelt than I expected it to be. I thought it was just going to be a quick little, ah, community, but no. Very cool. Oh, very cool. <sighs> yeah, no, I, I, yeah, cautiously optimistic. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, cautiously optimistic. That's that's the best way. That's the best way I can really put it. I um, I like what put it. I like what they're doing. I hope they can make what they're setting out to make. You know, like I think I think the things that they're setting up for are all very promising, and yeah, I I hope that they can actually build it the way that they've got it envisioned. So I believe closed beta is supposed to start next year. It sounds like an insane amount of work, right? Like the amount of stuff they're looking to build sounds like next year. It sounds like an insane year. It's year. It sounds like an insane amount of work, right? Like the amount of stuff. Like the amount of stuff they are looking to build sounds like a ridiculous amount of work for a small team. So yeah, I I hope they can actually build it all together, in in you know in in, in a relatively short amount of time. There's no way it's gonna be in January. No, nah, I don't think so. Oh, watch until the end. Register for 2023 beta. Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> there's, there's, there's. Yeah, now, now you got me, dude. That was a. I can't
cat. I think one of the characters in the game is a cat. I think they tweeted about that. So I think one of the main characters in the game is a cat or something, and they have like a voice actor, and I think that's the voice actor for the cat. The one you just saw. Anyways, yeah, pretty hyped for it. I hope they, uh, they can deliver. Yeah, here, look, there's the cinnamon edition tape. This is not acceptable cat behavior, by the way, for those of you wondering. Like, maybe it looks cute, but you definitely... I don't think you should be encouraging this. <laughs> this is not right, but anyways. <laughs> That's... I don't think I don't think that's what you want to do with your cat, but uh, hey, it's a cute video, I guess. But yeah, we'll see how this goes, guys. They also had this Frost Giant RTS community reveal thing in Korea. This was a month ago. I haven't seen this yet. At Frost Giant, one of the most important things for us is connecting with the community. And hey, the Korean was there. And community has played a key role in RTS for a long time. Chobra? This past June, we invited Korean pro gamers, commentators, and journalists to a special event to discuss our upcoming title, Stormgate. We had some thought-provoking discussions and we're sincerely grateful for their input. I mean, the artwork was really cool. Uh, it kind of reminded me of like Diablo meets That was Starcraft. JYP, wasn't it? I th anyway. Um, but I definitely got a lot of StarCraft vibes when I saw the units that I was looking at, so I'm really excited, dude. I really love the idea of lowering the skill floor, but keeping the uh, skill ceiling really high, and I think a lot of their approach is great. I love, love that they're still going to go with the Ender and make it a very malleable game, something that someone can just jump into and then kind of live their gaming career in the game. It was JYP, okay. As a commentator, when I heard they are going to focus on 1v1 competitors. Logo not, not invited? I don't live in Korea, guys. But you're right, I did not get invited for this Korea event. <laughs> I know. Event. <laughs> I know, I know. They probably didn't want Come me Come help us make the next great RTS. Register for the 20stormgate.com. This is the Dutch event? I don't think there's going to be a Dutch event. No, I don't think there's going to be an event in... <laughs> yeah, so, um... Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... The Netherlands. Yeah, so, um... Not too much new information. A little bit here and there, but nothing too... <laughs> not too much... Um... Um, not too much new information. A little bit here and there, but nothing crazy. But nothing too crazy. So I think they mostly made this video just to make sure that we can kind of keep the fire going for a little while longer, right? It's kind of like in the back of everyone's mind, and that makes a lot of sense. But uh, we're going to need to see a game. We're going to need to see a game before we can properly judge all of this. But I think, yeah, on the outset, they've done a pretty great job so far. Shout out to you.
Shout out to your thermal and mana. SC2 challenges and the results. Ghosts and Medivex, rank 100 Grandmaster. Two random Protoss units, rank 159 Grandmaster. Tier 1 units only. Several Rogue and Dark at a million... What the f*** is going on here? How is this on the front of the StarCraft subreddit at the tip of, of the, the top of the list? Like, if you're gonna bring up any players that like to play tier 1 units, I don't think you'd go Sarah Rogue Dark, but it's a bit of a post for sure. These are probably the strongest late game Zerg players ever. Actually, not probably. For sure. Interesting. Korean dude voiceover StarCraft sounds? Whoa, this is from 4th of October 2008. Starcraft에 나오는 유니트들 상담서 한번 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 아, 먼저 테란 유닛, 테란의 레이스 종이 비행기 레이스입니다. Wraith awaiting launch orders. Wraith awaiting launch orders. Sector Rafty, going to see. I'll take formation. 예, 그리고 다음으로 SCV. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good to go, sir. Down region. Just finish. 예, 그리고 다음에는 이제 그 사이언스 베이스 한번 해보겠습니다. We have your missile. Affirmative, sir. 예. This is what English sounds like, by the way, to non-native English speakers, in case you're wondering. 그리고 프로토스 유닛들 한번 보여드릴게요. 질럿 한번 해보겠습니다. My wife, my wife, she loves on a guy me, cowboy. Bloody. My favorite part about this is that he's doing this for an audience of just people, right? This is not an audience of gamers. This is 2008. This is just a bunch of people that came to see, I think, a comedy show or something. Like, if you do it, <laughs> an audience of normies, that's not what I was going to call them, but fair enough. Dragon, Dragon, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, we're going to go to the Templar, High Templar. Let's out and out him. You're fast, the last grill us. Yeah, we're going to go to the Templar unit. We're going to go to the Templar unit. I, I love, I love that all these people are laughing and they are actually familiar with what he's talking about. Look at this lady. She's well familiar with StarCraft jokes. In 2008. <laughs> Very good. Occupation? I thought it was a typo and it was supposed to say gangster or something. I'm also not entirely sure about this portrait, if I'm being 100% honest. But I think, yeah, it's, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, here, look, there's the cinnamon edition tape. This is not acceptable cat behavior, by the way, for those of you wondering. Like, maybe it looks cute, but you definitely... I don't think you should be encouraging this. <laughs> this is not right, but anyways. Um. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's what you want to do with your cat, but uh, hey, it's a cute video, I guess. I've actually done a little bit of research, guys. So this is a new thing that Twitch has recently started a little bit ago where they're offering ad incentives for the last half year or so. So basically what you have to do is set a certain number of ads that need to play on the stream every hour, and then you get paid by default, assuming you stream enough hours that month. In theory, pretty cool, but they've actually done a bit of a cheeky thing, man. So here's here's how it works, right? Here's here's what I've noticed. Oh, actually, let me let me get off paint, right? So here's here's kind of how it goes, right? So they've got like a box over here, they've got a box over here, they've got a box over here, and this one says like a hundred dollars, this one says a hundred and fifty dollars, this one says two hundred dollars, right? And this one says two minutes of ads, this one says three minutes of ads, this one says four minutes of ads, and then for like X hours of streaming every month, right? So say this is the offer you get in the first month, this, this is where you're gonna get. So say you're like, okay, I'm gonna pick the middle option. Guess what happens next month? <laughs> they will give you a similar offer 
150, 200, 250. However, they take out the leftmost option. So now suddenly, your options are 3, 4, and 5 minutes. <laughs> and this keeps going. Wardy, Wardy tweeted about this. Let me actually find it out real quick. Apparently, this is one of the offers that Wardy got today. 10 minutes of ads an hour. 10 minutes of ads an hour on a live streaming platform. Are you kidding? That's ridiculous. Anyways. Yeah, so this is apparently what Queenie got. 8 minutes of ads an hour. 103 hours for a month for 400 bucks. So, this is Winter's option. <laughs> 3 minutes of ads an hour. 190 hours of streaming. For $269. We can do the math on that one. That is... 269 divided by 190 hours, that is $1.41 for every hour that Winter streams that Twitch pays him. <clears throat> so if Winter were to pick the middle option, the one minute option is gone next month. He's never gonna see that one ever again. My ad incentive this month was actually pretty good, because I've been doing this little test. So I've noticed, and this was just a little bit of uh, trial and error I guess, but I noticed in the months that I did a lot of reruns, my ad incentive was absolutely trash. And I noticed that like whenever we talked about this with streamers internally, anyone who does a lot of reruns gets terrible ad incentives. And Winter basically does a rerun every day. Like Winter does reruns essentially 24-7 and this is his ad incentive. So in a way, they're kind of like, I don't know if this is intentional, but they're kind of like pushing away reruns. So I stopped doing reruns over the last four weeks and my ad incentive that I got offered on Twitch went up like threefold. Now obviously it is for the next month and November in general is a pretty good month. But yeah, it is, it is kind of interesting. So obviously ads only ever play for non-subs. And honestly, I feel like the vast majority of viewers over here are, you know, sub to the channel, but... Like, that's kind of the question you gotta ask yourself as a streamer, right? Like, how many like how many minutes of ads per hour is cool? So, like, one minute of ads an hour? Sure. Two minutes of ads an hour? Sure. Three minutes of- like, you gotta decide where you draw the line. Yeah, so my offer this month, the, for the next month that is, I also have three offers, and one of them is four minutes, the next one is six minutes, and then the last one is seven minutes. I don't want to do, like, that's a lot. That's a lot of ads. How many ads do you think they're going to push for, though? Like, if Twitch is offering Wardy 10 minutes of ads an hour, so mine comes down for 6 minutes of ads an hour to 11 bucks an hour. So if I play 6 minutes of ads an hour, I get roughly 11 bucks. If I play 4 minutes of ads an hour, I get $7.5 an hour. So that's quite significant. Like, that is obviously on top of all the other things, so that's pretty good. But is it worth- yeah, exactly. Is it worth the viewer to- I don't know, man. I, it, it's all- I'd rather just not play any ads. But, you know, someone actually suggested this on Twitter, and I unironically think it's a good idea. Someone suggested on Twitter that when you ban someone from the stream, rather than them not showing the stream anymore, just have them watch ads the entire time. I think that's pretty clever. Like, someone's like, you know, you bend them from the stream, and then just, like, they sit there watching ads for 15 minutes, ready to get angry in the chat again, and like, oh my god, this ad is still playing. And then just keep playing ads over and over. That's good, right? That's pretty clever. Don't know if Twitch is ever gonna get to that point, but that would be funny as hell. Like, if you get banned from a channel, you just see ads nonstop. A redemption arc, if you say something really dumb in the chat, you get to watch 10 minutes of ads and then you come back to the channel. That would actually be cool, dude. Like, then it would actually be like a... We can gamify the ad situation, for sure. I'm like, Selderick, look, you've talked about pagan death metal a little bit too much. Go sit on the bench, watch ads for 10 minutes. Alright? Meerkats, you're being too horny. Go watch ads for 20 minutes. See, these are things that would be... Yeah, great idea. Sit on the ad bench. Freedom of speech now only includes ads. <laughs> Loco, Twitch told me I watched your stream two days in the last month. Oh, you got an email? I saw Gabe got an email. Gabe is a real passionate man. Despite the fact that he's always posting those. A a anyways, look at this. Streams played 22 out of 22. 
Yeah. This is the only statistic we're willing to see, okay? Wait, memory, you got 23 out of 22? That's real passion. Below five days equals no passion. You got 19 out of 22. Get out, Ace. Can't believe this guy, man. Only 19 out of 22 streams. May as well just take your VIP badge away. Oh, okay. Now, Meerkat, Meerkat's... Okay, Meerkat's... Yeah, he gets it. Six days and nine hours? Wait. Nolan has got six days and nine hours? What is this piece of shit, Mugetsu? Five days and 18 hours only? Memory has got six and 11? Ay, 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 ay. Yo, if either of you want to have uh, Mugetsu's sword, we'll be handing it out to the most viewed hours. You have six days and 20 hours? For real, Falcon? I can't see this. Like, I, I have no way of, of reviewing it. You've got six days and 20 hours? Oh my god. Six days and 20 hours watched. 22 out of 22 streams. I mean, for every message though that you sent, Gabe sent five of them. AKA Gabe is a real spam lord. I don't know if reruns count, but I haven't done a rerun. Anyways, Loco, check this one out. Oh no, what have I done? Like. <laughs> I clicked, I clicked, okay. All right, all right, fine, you got me. Ooh, we're almost at 10 million messages, guys. That's pretty cool. What is that compared to like the real uh, big streamers on, on this platform though? Who's like the biggest streamer right now on Twitch? I wanna see how many messages they've got in total. Okay, biggest channel is XQC. Ay, ay, ay. They're at 673 million. That, that's, that's a little, that's a little much. My god. Oh, that's a bot. These are all bots. I could have sworn to set Mugetsu, but not quite. That, that's quite a few messages. Yeah, that's quite a few. Chat spam-wise, probably Pokimane. Only 69 million. It's not even close. That is quite nice, though. No, there's a lot of very large streamers on Twitch these days, man. Plus, like, XQC streams a ridiculous amount of hours. Like, he's live basically 24-7, it seems. Okay, maybe maybe like half half of the day. But. I posted mine to Twitter. Twitter.com slash local TV. Is that what you meant? 359 messages sent. Are you taking uh, notes, too, Gabe? G Gabe, are you... G Gabe, are you paying attention? Look, this... 300... That's also possible. You seeing that? I get, I get emails all the time that are a little bit shaky, but this one was next level. Hi! Doesn't address me or anything like that. Hi, we're launching our new P2E game. So this is basically a NFT crypto type of game very soon. And we were wondering if you're interested in doing a promo video for us. We can pay a fee and offer some free NFTs in exchange. Looking forward to hearing from you. This is the full email. It says the, the, the person's name right below this. Notice how it doesn't mention the game. It doesn't even mention the game. It says nothing. The game is not important. No, 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 no. I thought NFTs were already pretty much dead, but uh, I guess not, huh? Base is under attack. Hello. One zealot, pretending to be the most badass zealot in the world. Destroy all the things. Okay, I lost one. Okay. Where'd the mama ship go? Oh, mama ship's not very good at protecting anything, huh? Is this life? Is this a rerun? Yes. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes to both. It's a life rerun. Who wants to get sucked by the vortex? Everybody get close together. What? Okay, fine. Oh. What just? Ha. Ah. Okay, everyone get in here. Oh, come on. Thank you, Fluffy Waffle. Fluffy Waffle immediately resubs, huh? A little bit suspicious, but... Again? You've had a haven't had a good vortex in a long time. Alright. 
base is under attack. I should have just right clicked it. All these fancy abilities are not worth it. <laughs> uh, are we winning? I think we're winning. Battle cruiser unit pretty good. Thank you, Archival. Gifting us up to Mothership Sucks. Good name. Alright, we're clear. Grab that thing and set a course to rendezvous with Valerian. We're gonna rendezvous. We gotta be like, hey, bonjour, uh, je veux une uh, croissant. Et une uh, café. That sort of thing. I think that's what you do during a rendezvous. You just use as many sophisticated French words as you can find. Oui, et toi? Is this what it feels like to play against Battlecruiser rushes? No, Battlecruiser rushes are sick, man. I like, I like, uh, yeah. How to find out if your opponent is salty? Very nice. Just make some anti-air flyers, guys. It's the best way to do it. I Take found a response. these bits cleaning out the crumbs in my keyboard. You can have them, I guess. That's beautiful, man. Appreciate it. Can you beat StarCraft II Wings of Liberty? With only SCVs, laughing, crying emoji. I haven't gotten to the point yet where I'm putting emojis in my video titles and thumbnails. Laughing, crying emoji, PNG. Let me let me give it a try, Chet. Let me uh, let me give it a try, because that is what the real YouTubers do these days. Okay, no no arrows, no red circles, none of that. Okay, so here's here's today's YouTube video thumbnail. Here it is. <laughs> You know the worst part is it would actually work. I can almost guarantee you that it would work. It's so painful. This is too cringe. I can't. I can't. I can't. But I'm sure it would work. We're not at quite the, the end game yet, guys. The desperate times are not quite here yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do it for the money, loco. No, no, no. You got to make them bigger and rotate them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. See, I see you guys do a lot of YouTube viewing. I do a little bit of a drop shadow behind it. Don't forget to rotate one of them slightly for maximum effect. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And then you make the actual original image way brighter. Just colors only. This one, maximum saturation on all the things. There it is, man. It looks like a viral YouTube video or a Facebook video now. That thumbnail would revive StarCraft 2. Yeah. Happiness is a U U R <laughs> underscore. <laughs> How long does it last? Weight gain, loss of financial security and income. Oh my god. Okay. Taking care of your mental health. Okay. All right. I'll keep all of this in mind, man. <laughs> Did it say receding hairline? Oh my god. Ooh. Ooh. That explains why they didn't fit in the frame. So they don't even have an anti-ground mode. They hit air and ground? Wait, what? They hit air and ground, I need a tech lab to produce them. Okay. So what's the plan now, Commander? I'm just gonna make only those units. That's the plan. We're only gonna make one unit now. Do they have repair drones following them around? Is that what I see? And they're healing up the Odin? You You know those rates one promise you? Actually they're not rates. Truth is, we received some, but we stripped them up to add their abilities to dropship. So yeah, you will want to make uh, do with these experimental missile frigates we got from Mobius. They don't have the anti-armor abilities of the Wraith, but they can take a punch if you send them ahead of the Odin. They also include repair drones for support. Okay. How much are they? 350 minerals? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, guys, I think it's a little early for a midlife crisis. But one day I'll probably be sitting around and I'll be like, Oh my god, the only thing I've done for the first 40 years of my life is play video games. Ah, pretty good actually. Ah, it's not so bad. Yeah, actually, you know what? It could be worse. I kind of like making these missile frigates, guys. I want to make a whole lot of them. Yo, these things were awesome. 
Especially since I'm healing. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep using it. I might get the heroes or something, but let's get Jimmy. Thought we were just going over the symptoms of a midlife crisis. It's a dangerous uh, subject. Apparently it can start when you're 30 years old. Stormgate will make me feel young again. <laughs> Copium. You're 20 and you already have it. Well, there you go. I remember when I was 20 and the strength of my life before the back pain. Dude, these things are amazing, man. This is what uh, Protoss players uh, feel like when they're playing against frigates. Or as they're called, liberators. The first time you went to a club was at 8 years old? They start early in Romania, don't you? Ooh, oh, these abilities are amazing. Odin shutdown is imminent? No, 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 it's fine. We were having a discussion about that yesterday in the Patreon group chat. Apparently in Romania, what was the drink called again? Oh, I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Someone found out about this Romanian alcohol that apparently historically was drink uh, was drunk right before every meal, including breakfast. It was like between 27 and 40, or no, 27 and 82 percent alcohol. It's quite the range. Tuvitsa? I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's a traditional Ger or Romanian spirit that contains between 24 and 86 percent alcohol by volume. I love it. It's like, ah, whatever. As long as it burns going down, that's all we really care about. It's such a range. Apparently it's made from plums in Romania as the largest plum producer in the European Union. Among the top plum producers in the world. Anyways, apparently it's not commonly drunk anymore with breakfast. I know. It makes sense. They drink it in the morning and after that, they go and work the land for 10 to 14 hours. Damn, dude. Yeah, life was a little different back in the day, I guess, huh? Poor Jimmy over here, man. I don't know if they deal that much damage, but the animation is sick. It is really like a Valkyrie 2.0. No, their damage is sick, too. Plus, they have to repair drones? Like, <laughs> the fact that they repair one another. Oh, plus I can obviously use Mr. Swan here as well to repair the Odin if it's really desperate. I sound like Mickey? Wait, what? Ooh, oh, these abilities are amazing. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I could, I could, yeah. I was just excited about the frigate, okay? Tigus is going. Wait, am I still gonna get another upgrade? Hold up, do I still get another upgrade? Improves the healing rate? I can't wait to dig into that. Sure, sure, I like that, I, I, I agree. What we need is more healing rate. I thought they were a little weak. Definitely need a little bit more healing rate. 100%. Oh my god. I am now a missile frigate main. Okay, he's gonna take a little bit of a break over here. Jimmy is also taking a break. And fire. This is gonna get tricky. Battle cruisers at the next base. <laughs> oh, there's splash damage. I didn't realize that. Part. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Oh, wait. You were supposed to take a break. You didn't take a break. Oh, no. That's why we have a Viking. To take, to take those hits. Okay, they may have overdone it with some of the units, man. <laughs> I think you're probably supposed to use this as a support unit. Kind of like, you know, High Templar, Infestors. Actually, those are very much the armies all on their own. Wait. Are you kidding me right now? That was a f Wraith backstab. It's not cool, game. Don't appreciate that much. There were suddenly 50 Wraiths. Very toxic behavior. Not, <laughs> not such a unit now, is it? You're right, this convinced me. Wraiths, best unit in the game. He's a little low on HP, though. Yeah. Okay, here we go, here we go. I 
I killed the best unit in the game. Like it wasn't even the best unit in the game. Amazing. Nukes! Quick, fly in him! Fly in there! Yes! Happy New Year! Okay. No! Woo! That was so close. Oh, I can't believe we did that on the first try. Almost too greedy. Bro, I couldn't stop flying. Like, I couldn't s fly, right? Like, that was a problem. Oh, okay. First try. Let's go. Didn't even die once. There's no purifying, by the way, guys. Normally, you can purify. I. This is kind of like Dark Souls now. I, I've kind of lost the plot of the story. Mario can't be purified, huh? It was all too late. I can purify whatever this is. Maybe it's not dead yet. Yeah, maybe. Muriel, my assistant, my lover, lost to the blight. You never once laid a hand on me. You have proven firsthand that though the blight may trap us in an undying shell of impurity, it will never deprive us of who we are. Wait, is this Muriel's? And anyways, I've tried countless experiments to bring her back to me, but it's all been to no avail. Oh no! Thanks to my constant work with the blight, the immortal kings came to being. And now even the white priestess suffers as a result of my work. Now that I've divided the king, surely I will be driven from my lab. Heh! Ha ha! Ha! Ha ha! Ha! Good voice acting. Truly, I am a pitiable fool without you, Muriel. And yet, I mustn't give up now. Not until your life's work is complete. Not until we save the White Priestess. Please, Muriel, one day. Let me hear your voice again. Manipulates Blighted to blast enemies. While slow, this deals heavy damage and can blow enemies away at a distance. Vaden, the head of the King's Mage Brigade, became unusually obsessed with the Blighted experiments after losing his beloved. He sank into depravity. All right. Ooh, and I can now unlock sealed doors. All right. Amazing. Muriel's Blighted Litter. Please don't blame yourself. I prepared for this eventuality when I set out to study the Blight. I wanted to tell you face to face, but I couldn't find the words. Please forgive me. There's so much more to do. I hope you'll continue researching in my stead. I'm sorry things ended up this way. This game's kind of sad, guys. Like, the story, believe it or not, this may come as a surprise, but it's kind of sad. My repeated experiments have produced unexpected results. I have yet to return a Blighted to its former consciousness. However, I've successfully created a new Blighted from a test subject that retains conscious, uh, or conscious thought, rather, and the ability to communicate. I have to continue monitoring their, pro uh, monitoring their progress. But by creating a blighter that retains its humanity, have I unlocked the secret to immortality? At least the king will be pleased. I suppose I could call the substance wrong from the white priestess. The deathless elixir. Though there's nothing I can do for Muriel. Any trace of humanity left in her has long since dissipated. So basically the story of this game is that someone tried coming up with a cure to this disease and accidentally <laughs> things up. Okay. 
Open sesame. Silva's blight-stained note. The forbidden domain is filled with unfathomable experiments. The air is so choked with blight, I can't even breathe without a mask. I'm the only one who can protect the white priestess of the fount. I'm all she has left. If I drink the elixir, will it give me the strength needed to protect her? I'm useless as I am now, as I've been. I want to transform myself. I must, for secret's sake. Oh, yikes. There's one boss down here somewhere, guys. I think, anyways. Oh, jeez. What a lovely place. This seems friendly. Friendly and inviting. Yeah, this is what I imagine the inside of my stomach looks like. Oh my god, they deal much damage. Holy crap. My stomach looks worse. Not mine, Chet. I only eat leaves and uh, plants. Never anything unhealthy. Not even once. Try listening to the music. Oh god. A horrible place. All right, I want to see what's behind the door. This is where we begin, right over here. Now, right over here at the very beginning is a door that I could not previously open. Oh my god, my character is completely blighted out of her mind, by the way. She's even growing tentacles now. Oh. Restoring the Aegis Curio. The Aegis Curio, crafted long ago by the ancients, holds the power to ease the, or ease the suffering of the priestesses who absorbed blight while performing purifications. Its power has been weakened by repeated purifications by priestesses over many years. The power of an ancient spell can be used to restore this power and help the white priestess if you can decipher the stone tablet. I am prepared to restore the Curio. I wish I would decipher the spell myself, but alas, I have little time left. So this is where we make it. I only have one part, though. Like, I have one of the seven stone tablets. Oh, I can maybe go over this now, too. Yeah, 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 that's how we fall down. So there's probably something to loot, because this is that really large room that I tried climbing in. A couple times. <laughs> where do you think the thing is at? It's over there! I saw it! I saw the f thing! That's it right there, man. For 100%. 100% right there. I, I was close. Okay, we're gonna try and get it from here. No! F That's it right there, man. So this is the real jump right over here. But I don't have the other ability. Like, I, I don't have the the extra dash. So I don't see how I can get over there. Like, it's right over here. Right above me. But I, I, I don't see how I can get there. You don't need the extra dash? How would I not need the extra dash? You can only do a single jump. I can do a dash and one jump. There's no double jumping. So I'd have to jump first and then dash? Dash first, then jump? Yeah, but like... That's that's how far you can go. Okay, that was not very smart by me. <laughs> oh, is that the idea? You like attack the air and you get time to turn around? So that's a pretty big slowdown. I guess I can use it as well while falling down, right? Oh yeah, it also moves you up ever so slightly. That's an interesting interesting decision. Oh my god, bro. Okay. Time to get over it. Because I was so good at that game, I decided I wanted to play it again. 
Well, I used Silva there, but Lily didn't grab onto the thing. Okay. Nope. Panic. So... I don't see how I can get high enough. Like, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm not going up. Oh God, nope, <laughs> panic, panic. Okay, I think I'm gonna dash, jump, melee attack, dash again. Oh my God. That's gotta be so f***ing close. There's not even any motivational quotes in this game, dude. There's no hammer, no cauldron. Nope, nope. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> ah! me, man. I know as well when like the stream delay catches up because I just see tons of movement from the corner of my eye. Your failure here is a metaphor. To learn for what, please resume climbing. Rob Dubbin. Thank you, uh... Whatever the character's name was. In, uh, getting over it. I think it was a bunny. Bennett Foddy, that's it. F*** me, f*** me, f*** me. F*** me! <laughs> Oh, I don't like this game. This game is ass. There's nothing even like it's gonna give me like five HP boost or whatever, man. But now I need to get the goddamn thing too. I'm gonna go the other way once again. I'm gonna make the walk of shame all the way over there and then inevitably fall down again a little bit too far. We all know it's gonna happen, but maybe on the off chance I will do something different. Oh. What would be the order of getting there? Don't get stuck with the thing that ruins your day. Smile and be happy. Life is too short to be wasted on negative thinking. Ritu Garturi. What's that? Jump, fall, cry? It doesn't bring me any higher, though. Jump, dash, hammer, hammer? Wait, you don't think I need to dash? Like, for a second time? Okay, well... Oh! <gasps> First try, baby. First try. Uh, I found a small girl in the Deadlands. She didn't speak, but fixed her gaze upon me as she clung desperately to me. I don't quite know what came over me then. Had I gone mad, wanting to bring back a child of the ancients? Was it because she resembled us? Because he was a, a child, or perhaps a sense of obligation? Perhaps I wanted my sins to be forgiven. Okay, got some stagnant blight. And another piece of paper. Though we once thought them completely wiped out, the ancients have returned. From the farthest reaches of the land they came. Or they come, rather, reanimated by the blight. The children of the ancients were revered and worshipped in Land's End as the white priestesses. They were the only ones who could stave off the blight. And though I knew well, or I know well, or full well, the toll that purification places on their bodies, I could find no way to forestall their ultimate sacrifice. Another sin to add to the pile. Atonement now seems but a bitter joke. Guys, I got over it. Look at me now, Ma. I got a piece of paper that I didn't have before. I think it's the motivational quotes from Bunny Warren and Makrivas that uh, really got me through this all. It's over here, isn't it? It's over here, isn't it? It's over here, isn't it? It's over here, isn't I've already been here. No, I haven't. Yo! Accidentally good. The room turned orange. Every time I see the color orange now, dopamine. Right away. Dopamine hit as soon as I see orange. Remember when we used to struggle in this room? Me meter. We're just cruising through everything now. Like, sex is nice and all, but have you ever had a, a, a room turn orange? That's what I'm saying. Luck, oh, I have not. Thanks for rubbing it in. Well, you should pick up the game. So you can make the rooms turn orange. I mean... I don't know, man. I just say words. 
So hopefully people will think I sound cool. I obviously have no idea what that's like. So I can, I can open, like, okay. <laughs> words. Like all of those words made sense, but not in that order. Loco, 2022. Dear diary, today I died. I was killed by this thing in some expansion. I leave all that I own to my cat. Goodbye, cruel world. All right. How how do you? What are the? How does this? Is there a name for this particular ship? If not, the class should suffice. Thank you. Guys, I am disappointed with the people that are asking questions sometimes on StarCraft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've played any StarCraft 2 at any point, you'll probably know the name, right? It's the Hyperion. Oh, thank God. Cattle Bruiser? No. Muras are so big, it's crazy. No, they're not this big. They're, this is not in scale. They're supposed to be like a thousand people on the... Uh... -huh. Uh, okay, okay, fine, fine. No. God, please remove the trash players from StarCraft. <laughs> okay, alright, fine. Okay, fine. I've gone to the dark side. <laughs> what is going on? Look at this game. Look at look at this game. Look at look at the minimap. What what is going on? This guy is it? It's okay. It's okay, dude. Honestly, some like the people that have the most fun in StarCraft 2 are usually also ranked on the lower end of the ladder. I'm fairly sure that like the higher you climb, the less fun the game actually becomes. Like the game itself may still be enjoyable, but the fun part is no longer really there. <laughs> There's one ghost. <laughs> Why is there one ghost? There's. <laughs> All right, nice. Look, I'm Surfler, and I have a blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing the game for fun is where where they get you, man. Oh, it deals splash damage. Holy! Shit. Normally, it doesn't deal splash damage. Thank you, four Marines. Which one's Jimmy? Oh, <laughs> that explains why it didn't show up at the bottom of the screen. I was wondering where Jimmy went. Jimmy, no! Jimmy, stop that! Jimmy, stop messing around, Jim! Oh my God. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is get Marauders. I think Marauders are probably good. What's up? You can count on me. Talk to me. What's the plan? I'm glad that I can count on you, Jimmy. That means a lot. Oh my god. Not the healer, please. Nope. Stop it. Get him, Jimmy. Whee! Ring around the rosy. <laughs> go, 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 go. Keep running. No! Jimmy, Jimmy got this, Jimmy got this, Jimmy got this. Easy. No! Who? Okay, easy may not be entirely accurate, but, you know, I'm not sure if that was good. Okay. Oh, sh I still have to... I forgot that there's a lot of enemies in that room. Sell me. She sounds so excited when she says, You rang? No, Brenda. I did not ring. <laughs> Don't mind me just walking my ultralisk. Ah, there it is. Firebat's actually good, man. Like, fire bets are pretty much terrible on every RTS game ever. Like, every game that has some sort of flamethrower, they're always trash. But in this mod, they've made them so good that they're like, I actually think they're a little overtuned. They're good! Yeah, they're actually useful. I think they're actually a little too good. Well, they're s like, these, these, are, these are beefed up out of their minds, man. Is there still, um, I still need to gather a little bit more, don't I? There's still weapons and artifacts. Oh, I guess in the final final section, in the escape part of this mission. Oh my god, that's gonna be super hard. Whew, okay. It seemed to just disappear. Define disappear. I lost a couple units. But not really that many. Oh, I missed one thing over there. Whoa. Can I still get it? 
These are cute ultras. Uwu. I don't know if you can say uwu. I don't know if that's allowed. I remember back in the day when the Runok in the chat used uwu. This was like 2012. One of the original weebs. The OWs. Yeah, nobody, nobody knew. Nobody knew what it meant at the time. You're more of an owo kind of guy? Alright. Ah! Jeez, dude. I was promised cute ultras. How is that cute? There was nothing cute about that thing. Yeah, what the hell, man? Okay, here's the cute ultras. Wait, I missed a weapon somewhere. Hello? Guys, the f door's not open. Okay, now it is. Wait, I missed something somewhere. I did not actually get the full reward for this mission. I thought I picked up everything. Where did I miss something? Did you guys notice that I missed something somewhere? No one in the chat is calling me out for missing something, so I feel like I didn't. Twitch chat never lies, right? Have you guys ever lied? Maybe I did miss something somewhere. I, I think I missed one consumable somewhere. Hello? How long does this... Ah, there you go. How long does it take to blow up? No, I didn't miss anything over here. <laughs> 12 out of 13. That was one in the last section? I'm actually gonna load. Wait, the last one was near the end? You just walked by it? Oh, it was right at the very end end. I walked straight past it. What a loser. You imagine walking straight by the thing you're looking for. Normally, I, I'm like a hawk. I see everything on the screen. Never miss the smallest item. Haters will say that's fake. Was it that one? Guys, I had that one. Wait, you're, everyone's calling me blind? But you thought I didn't have that one? The one you lost, Jim Loco, you had it then? Wait, I'm confused. No, I don't have it. It says it in the top left. Collect weapons and artifacts. I'm missing one. The thing is not colored in. It would be colored in if I had it all. I have it? Wait, you think I have it if I... How would I have it right now? It didn't color in. Okay, I got 13 out of 13. I don't know if I got trolled by the chat or the game or both at the same time. I can't believe I doubted Twitch chat there for a moment. Yeah, 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 that's true. Embarrassing. I should never doubt Twitch chat. Uh, one little video I wanted to share with you guys that I've watched like five times today because I thought it was hilarious. Apparently, they held a CSGO event in Australia. So for those of you watching with kids or whatever, there's a whole lot of swearing in this video. I mean, I just said it's in Australia, right? So, I don't know why you're surprised. But this, oh my god, it cracked me up. So, apparently they had a Counter-Strike event <laughs> in Australia. To Love you, Chet. Just kidding. F*** you. <laughs> go. <laughs> I think it's halfway through the round. Every night before bed, they're not wrong. That's a new one. Thing which is welcome. Still, it's so good. For some reason, the Australians always find creative ways to get swear words into regular conversation. I gotta say, man, it reminds me a lot of conventional sports, right? But, uh, yeah, f*** you, Overwatch, f*** you, it's pretty hilarious, f*** you, Twitch, jet.
That's funny. I like that. Yeah, the Aussies, the Aussies definitely know uh, how to swear. They, they've got a lot of practice. I guess it's just general conversation, right? But anyways, they're really good at it for sure. If I can get close enough, I can telepathically dominate the crew. Oh, dude, telepathically dominate. Whoa. Didn't know Ravens had that balloon. It's got cloak. Ha! Ah. Oh, sh I rapid fired it. Uh, that was unnecessary. I didn't realize I could cast multiples in one go. I thought I could only do like one at a time. I thought it had an individual cooldown, but apparently not. It's not funny, guys. Don't know why you're laughing. There's nothing funny about that. I just used my snipe on the medic. Oh, by the way, I gotta show you guys. Speaking of Zelda, I thought this was hilarious. Speaking of Zelda. Thank you, uh, by the way, Pilgrim. Welcome. Appreciate you. Ah, here we go. This was on Facebook. Francis says, I know she's from a game. I don't play video games, and I have no issue about representation, but making Zelda a girl is a bit much. They're overreaching. <laughs> thought it was pretty funny. Anyway, thank you, thank you very much, Pilgrim. I would like to think it's a troll. I found another gem, actually, this morning. Let me just... <laughs> let me just... Let me just show you. I think the guy was serious, but I actually believe that this was just someone actually... Like, I'd like to think that this is a joke, okay? Just trying to create bait. But apparently, this is actually a list someone made. Most significant people in human history, second draft. This guy made a top 14 list of most significant people. Jesus, George Washington, Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, William Shakespeare, Martin Luther King Jr., Darwin, Aristotle, Steve Jobs, Michael Jordan, Napoleon, and Da Vinci. Uh, there's a lot of questions here, but I like that Mr. Jordan made the list. Okay. Like, sure, there, you know, Genghis Khan may have, you know, done a, a bunch of things, right? But did he ever win basketball tournaments? <laughs> I also think it's kind of funny that Martin Luther King Jr. made it on the list, but not the OG Martin Luther. Anyways, the whole list is just a complete meme, but I'd like to think that it's just complete bait and that someone made that just to try and get as much traction as possible. But I'm fairly sure, looking at some of the things, that he was actually serious. <laughs> that's so funny to me. That someone thinks that <laughs> that's the list. Uh, it's a very American list, though. I mean, Jesus at first is probably not too f too weird, but... Elon Musk didn't make the list either. Not a single woman on the list either, by the way, which is also... Uh, Gandhi? Gandhi is another one that's probably quite important. You know, there are also important people that definitely shaped history. You know, not good. They're not in a good way, but they certainly are influential. Yeah, Michael Jordan made the list, but Muhammad Ali didn't. Yeah, yeah did not. That's... <laughs> it's so funny, but he like 14 names. That's what we get. That's so good. Yeah, how many points did Newton score in the NBA chat? What he, <laughs> he came up with calculus? Nobody likes calculus. Was it calculus he came up with? I don't know, math. Uh, but I like that there's a second draft as well. So like the original raft draft was even dumber. <laughs> I like to see the first draft. All the Roman emperors? No, it's just Caesar, man. Caesar is the only guy. That's probably the only name he knew, so he's like, ah, that's the one. So good. Caesar, yeah, Caesar's the one that made the salad. <laughs> I can't believe Tiger Woods wasn't on the list. <laughs> I think making a list like that is very dangerous, but to call it second draft as well, it's kind of, kind of funny that he, like, he considered it, like, over multiple days. And that's the best we could come up with. Hey, buddy. Are you also stranded here? He's like, no, I don't want to be held. I just want to, you know. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, wow, looking handsome. Looking real good. I'm actually going to move him because he's going to walk over my desk. Whoa. Come on. He turned around. <laughs> so you guys can't see. Let me take a picture real quick. Here.
Here's what Toby did to my monitor. <clears throat> I think I can tilt it back. Yeah, we should be good. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Things are looking fine. He also tilted this one somehow. Interesting. Loco, you will be amazed by this, by this fascinating American dish. Dishwasher salmon, an American dish made with the heat from a dishwasher, particularly from its drying phase. Uh, I mean, like every minute we, we stray further from God, we, I, I'll, I'll need a moment. Why did you make a... Why did you make an American flag in the background? What's going on? First we found out about the American dish of dishwasher salmon, and now you come out with this. I'm not quite over this yet, okay? You can't show me an American flag today. Like, it's just an American dish made with the heat from a dishwasher, particularly from its drying face. No, bro. No, 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 no. This is too much. I can't handle any more. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Why do you still have that open, Loco? I don't know. Look, I'm just as disappointed as you. What are you guys even talking about? I look away for half a minute, and I see someone talking about Alarex stepping on you. Guys, it's Monday. First few minutes of the Monday on Twitch. Already thirsty. Already thirsty. That took minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm surprised. Just disappointed. I still cannot fathom that the White Priestess was some sort of experiment. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Milo was biting. <laughs> Milo turned the speaker volume up and it started going it's like since the volume of the speaker would go back through the microphone. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, he's a DJ. It started uh it started looping. You okay, buddy? Oh my god, he's horrified. Here. I have a treat somewhere, mate. Yeah, he scared himself, he's horrified. Don't worry, I can make him forget. Ooh, these are small ones, dude. That's like one big one broken into four pieces. Sorry guys for that, uh, that noise. Cat problem. Bribe, acknowledge. No, he made, I think he just moved and he accidentally turned the dial. He didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to give you guys a jump scare either, but. That's how Loco solves all of his problems. I do spoil my cats quite a bit, yeah. The thing about cats, though, is that, like, if you spoil your kid too much, right, at some point they're gonna have to go out into society and be a functioning adult, right? Preferably. But with cats, you know. <laughs> my master volume- oh, god. Oh, sh Okay, I think when Milo jumped away, he also turned my microphone volume. Test, test, test. One, two, one, two. Is that better? Yeah. Should be good. Sorry about that. There's the Leviathan thing. I don't really have a lot of anti air right now, which I don't really like. Oh, what? That was not mes necessary. Okay. Oh, God. What? Who? Oh, it's Uber Brenda. What's going on, Brenda? That's not what I expected. I thought it was 69%. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> 69% is when the Leviathan spawns. 66% is apparently when Brenda comes to play. Sir. 